You're welcome, Judge. Parties have been sworn in. You may be seated, sir. Have a seat. Mr. Alexander, how long were you sort of in a relationship with the defendant? About September to December. Of what year? 2012. Okay. Miss Sundin says in her counterclaim that at some point during this relationship, which was brief, she made a loan to you in the amount of $1,500, a loan which you did not repay. So without saying that it was a loan or a gift, did there come a time, Mr. Alexander, in the course of your relationship, that Miss Sundin did give you $1,500? No, ma'am. Did she give you any money? No. Never? No, the only thing we did was go shopping together. We spent money together, but she's never gave what me any money. What kind of money did you spend together? Um, shopping, dinner, movies, the things you do in a relationship, but she's never given me any money. Any cash? Never. Or a check? No, You're never. You're not going to lie. Oh, shh, shh, shh. I don't, don't even don't, have a... Don't, 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 just, just a second. Okay. I only have a checking account for the cash. What part of shush did you understand? Your answer is she never gave you any money. Correct. Okay. Now, this is your case. When you sort of wed your own separate ways, you put all of your stuff, with the exception of a big TV, in a storage unit that is in her name. And you left your big 42, 48, 55 inch television set, whatever it was, in her house. Yes. And she refuses to give you back the stuff that was in the storage unit mm. and your big TV. Yes. Okay. Miss Sundin says you can have all your stuff. She doesn't want your stuff, but you owe her money. And she says, which I'm not so sure I believe, that the furniture was given to her as collateral for this loan. That's baloney, by the way. You may have said to him at some point, you're not getting your furniture till I get the money. Your Honor, we verbally talked about it. You verbally talked about what? But he needed money for to take his daughter's braces off. His ex took everything supposedly from him. Listen to me. He needed money. Just a second. You didn't understand what I said to you. What I said to you was, I don't think that he gave you the furniture as collateral. What I said was, I think he stored his furniture in your storage unit, and you said to him, until I get back the money that I gave you, you're not getting your furniture. That's not collateral. I gave the money after the fact. What difference does it make? You're not understanding what I'm saying to you. I do have a text message from him saying that he does owe me the money. Just a sec. He may owe you the money. I'm just doubting that you had an agreement that the furniture was collateral. I think that you just held on to it until you got your money. Are you following what I'm I saying? I am telling you, Your Honor. Okay? Because you gave him the money after the stuff was in storage, correct? Isn't that what you just told me? Yes, I was not Got Just a you. second. And while you were still in a relationship, correct? We just had but started dating. While you were having a brief but loving love affair, People don't usually say, I'll lend you the money, but put your furniture in storage. I'm going to keep this collateral until Honor, you pay me back. I don't see that as pillow talk, Miss Sundin. That's what I'm talking about. I've known him since I was 12 years old. It Your doesn't Honor. matter. It doesn't matter. 15. I don't see that statement as pillow talk between two people Six who, have an, who, have, who have an intimate relationship. So I want you to show me the text. It's a very easy case. He's going to get his furniture back. And if you can prove to me that he owes you this money and exactly what money it is, you're going to have your counterclaim granted. It's easy. So what I want you to do, you said you gave him $1,500. Show me. Well, right here, Your Honor, shows that he knows that he owes me money. Just a second. Do you have a check? I did it out of cash that I have in my house. I have proof of the money that I had in my house. I have a chronic illness, and I hold money in my house in case I have to go out of state to see my specialist. And that was the money that I had given him as cash. First and of I all, have, she never, she never given me just, any money. Just a second. Elijah, just, listen, you, don't speak. Am I looking at you? I'm not talking to her. I already said, you may get your furniture back. Now we're up to, does she have against you for cash. Yeah. Now, You're, you keep, listen to me carefully, Miss Sundin. You say you gave him $1,500 in cash. On what date did you give him $1,500 in cash? Don't look down. Look at me. That's an easy question. It was like... In, Not luck. On what September date? September 30th. And where were you when you gave him this $1,500 in cash? In my bedroom, Your Honor. Now I'm going to see the proof that you 
think you have to establish to my satisfaction that you had this $1,500 in cash in your house. Could I see that, Bert, please, along with the text message? Here's a short, brief summary of it. In your honor, too, I want to... Just don't say anything. Okay, so you got a settlement from Social Security Disability where they made a determination that you were disabled and that you got your past due benefits according to this decision with $30,255 for June 2009 through April of 2012. Well, that shows that you got this settlement. Now you're going to show me where you put it in the bank because you didn't have $30,000 in cash. No, I didn't. Show me where you put it in the bank and where you drew out cash money. I, That's, this only shows me that you had money. I've had that money stored for a long time in safekeeping in an envelope oh, hidden no. in my purse. Oh, no, 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 no. Give Honestly, it back to, Your Honor. And give it back to Give he it back is a to criminal. That I don't believe I've got his record of him lying, falsely lying to police. He's a felon. Listen to me very carefully. He's now. a liar. Listen, so are you. Your Honor. Nobody, so are you. Nobody keeps $30,250 in an envelope in their house. No, I did not have that whole amount in my house. Well, I had it in, in the bank and along well, with some money all, let, for emergency. Then all you have to do is show me the bank statement where you had the money and where you took out $1,500, $2,000, $2,500 on or about September 30th, 2012. That's all you have to do. You bring a whole lot of papers to me. All you have to do is show me that. It's very easy. It's easy. Okay. I need the money you owe me. That's not a problem, my dear. Can't keep my things hostage. And your honor, the coaches... It coach shouldn't is... have to come to this. I told you I will give you your money. That's all I have. I'm trying to sell it. Okay, Mr. Alexander, you want to tell me what that's about, please? Yes, this was for when we were in the car and I told her, watch out, and she hit a pothole, we hit the pole or whatever. Are you I, I don't want you to speak. I don't want you to speak. Otherwise, I'm just going to ask you to leave. Yes, now, he's telling me his version of the nonsense, which I am going to listen to. I want to know when you say to her, that's not a problem, but you can't keep my things hostage. Yeah, she was talking about the car accident that we were in. Car so accident, just a second. Car accident you were in. Yeah, yes. and I told her I would help her pay it because I did say, watch out, and we did hit the pole. I said, I'll help you pay When it. was that? That was in maybe October. No, I don't believe that at all. Don't believe it, Mr. But Alexander. But she, she's... Don't has... believe it. Here we go. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Elijah Alexander says ex-girlfriend Jessica Sundin won't return his furniture. Jessica is countersuing for an unpaid loan and for crashing her car. I don't know how much he owes. This is no indication whatsoever as to what it was for, how much it was, anything. You know, what kind of work did you do before you became disabled? Pharmacy tech and hospice nurse. Oh, fine. Then that's what you have a checking account for. You live in an apartment or a house? I sold my house to move back to the city, so I'm in an apartment now. Okay. And you pay rent? I do. You pay rent by check or cash? By check. By check. That means that you have a checking account. Yes. So if you make a loan, that's what you do. You write a check, and on the check you write loan, or you have some record of what that loan amount was. Not that you did have money. I believe that you have money. Social Security Administration gave you, Here. for whatever reason they gave you, $30,000 of back disability payments. Your Honor, okay. Your Honor, can Very I good. talk Give about the car? Give him back his furniture. All of his furniture. Can I talk Five about the car? Five days. Speak not. Five days, he gets all of his furniture and his TV. He will be sending a moving company to pick it all up within five days. Otherwise, he's going to be there with a marshal at your door. Do you understand? That's it. Your Honor, I was sleeping when Period. you crashed my car. Period. He's coming to get his furniture, all of his stuff that is in storage. It's fine. According to you, you have it. I want my money back. I don't know how much he owes you. And I don't believe you. I've got everything Don't believe here. you. Sorry. Don't believe he crashed you. my car when I was sleeping. He took my keys when I was sleeping. And Toodle he came Bye. home at 2 in the morning. Five days, you go get your stuff. TV and furniture. He crashed yes, my car. It all car. better be in good condition. Otherwise, he's going to sue I've you again for damaging it. I've in his Goodbye. furniture. It's fake leather. It's not even real. Oh, he's our excuse. They step out. He's a felon. He, he, even, he even has felonies, I found out. 
He's a liar. She tries everything she can, like you're a felon, you're this, but he took my car, crashed it, came home drunk. I was sleeping. Has a pass. Oh yeah, he punched a hole in my door. No, we broke the door moving the dresser in. The night he re he decided to hold me hostage for six hours in my room. No, held nobody hostage. If that was the case, I think I would be in prison right now. Well, the order of protection will be in effect on Monday. He seems like she got bitter about everything, you know. And I still want to be friends with her. It's not. I don't hate her. No, I'm not gonna be friends with you. You know, material stuff is whatever. But friends, you don't. F up. And now the next case. All parties in the matter of Foy versus Bangura. Step forward. Leslie Foy is suing her goddaughter, Monique Bangura, for damaging a car that was rented in her name. Miss Bangura, who do you work for? Accountancy Lane. What is that? It's an accounting business. What do you do for them? I'm a secretary. How long have you been working for them? For about one year. When did you start working for them? I don't remember the approximate date I started working. You mean you don't remember the exact date? Yes. Not the approximate date. Well, the thank approximate you for the date. correction. I appreciate it. That's about seven months ago. Yes. Prior to that, who did you work for? NYU. What is that? A cancer center. What did you do for them? I was a receptionist as well. And how long did you have that job? For about six months. It was a temporary position. And did you leave that job to go to the accounting firm? Yes. So that you've worked continuously over the last year? I've always, yes. And you are paid from both of those companies by check? Of course. Who did you live with during that period of time? My boyfriend. Did you pay rent? No. Did you have a car? Yes. What kind of car? A Honda. What happened to the car? Well, we broke up and he took back the car. So it was his car? Yes. When you were working at these places where you received paychecks, how did you deposit the paychecks? In the bank. In your checking account? Yes. How long have you had that checking account? About three to four years. When you open up a checking account, you usually get either a debit card or a credit card. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose to get neither? Because I just have bad spending habits. I love the shop, and that's the reason why I didn't. I don't necessarily believe that. Yes, if you mm. ever seen my well, class, well, I, I know do that's shop what a you're lot. telling me. I know what you're telling me, but I know that somebody who has a constant work history, who's paid by check, usually has, at least for emergencies, some sort of an emergency card in their wallet so that they could buy something if they absolutely needed it, either by way of a debit card or whatever. This is what this case is about. Honestly, I I'm really... not speaking to you now. Okay. Judge Judy continues in a moment, says her goddaughter, Monique, Bangura owes for damages to a car that was rented in her name. Now, this is what the case is about. This is your goddaughter. According to you, she called you one day and said, I don't have a car. I want to run some errands. Could you please rent a car for me? I don't have a credit card, but just take care of it and I'll pay for it. Yes. You were foolish enough and you did that yes. because you filled out paperwork indicating who was going to be the driver. Correct. Who was me. going? I you. Was. Yes. You didn't list any other driver. No. And when you listed yourself as a driver, they asked you for your driver's license. Yes. And you gave them your driver's license. Yes. Because what you did when you filled out the paperwork was you filled out the paperwork and said, I am going to be the only driver on this car, right? Yes. Right. Here is my driver's license. Correct. And then you went outside, and a little while later, you turned the car over to your goddaughter, yes. Miss Bangor, because that was your plan to turn it over to her. Yeah. That was the arrangement. You were going to turn it over to her, and according to you, you said to her, you have to go put your name on the contract. Yes. But when you filled out the contract indicating that you were going to be the only driver, that was a lie. Yes. Well, you think that we're going to help you? Courts are not going to help you. Because what happened is she kept the car a long time and then she returned the car finally damaged. Correct. And she had not gone in and filled out the paperwork, had not put her name on the contract, had not shown them her license. And you know who enabled her to do that? I did. Correct. Did you pay the car company for the damage to the car? Not yet, no. Somebody's going to do it, but you don't get rewarded by courts for going into a reputable car dealership that tries to do the right thing, because as far as they know, she has no driving license. Right. She's had her license suspended. That's why they ask you, who's going to be driving the car? You have the contract? Yes. I want to take a look at it. Mm. 
Judge, can I speak? Listen to me. So far, you're a winner, so you don't have to say anything. I just want to so say So far, that. you're a winner. Okay. You don't have to say anything. Thank you. That doesn't mean you did the right thing, because you put the fraud of knowing that the car was not going to be driven by the plaintiff. You asked her to get the car for you. Now, you could have, if you wanted to both do the right thing, you could have gone into the place together, together. I you understand. were too busy. I understand, but I told her to get insurance, and I gave you her the money. Did. Just a second. I'm talking to No, no, you're not talking. I'm talking. My problem starts right at the beginning. When you conspired, the two of you, we didn't conspire. But, yes, you did. She called me. It was you don't the understand. place was almost closing, Oops. and she said Say, that she would look come at me. Back. Watch my mouth. No. <laughs> Sorry, I'll meet you there in the morning. You're right. But you don't say, well, sure, I'll go over there and I'll fill out the paperwork quickly. That's conspiracy. You don't like the word, but that's what it is. You conspired with each other to go in and fill out this paperwork because I can read you in every place where it says you're going to be the only driver. Right. And you knew that that wasn't true. They even ask you, I certify that the driver's license or licenses presented is currently valid and is not suspended, expired, revoked, canceled, or surrendered. They want to make very certain who's driving their car. That's why they ask you to look at it. Look at you, look at your license, see if it's the same picture. That's fraud. And I'm not helping you. Okay. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. Thank you. All right, sorry, excuse. You may step out. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter of Step versus Pearson. Step forward. Claudette Stepp is suing her sister, Denise Pearson, for painting and redecorating her bedroom without her permission. This is your sister. You asked her to watch your dog when you were going away. She said she would watch your dog. She stayed at your house. And your $5,000 complaint is she redecorated your room. And without you my hate permission. it. And you hate it. She redecorated your room. Without my permission. Don't look so pained. I'm sorry. Did she kill your dog? No, but she just destroyed her. Did she kill your dog? No, ma'am. She destroyed she? my house. Just, she had like a stoner party in there, and uh, okay. it looks ridiculous. Okay. So you want her to be responsible to you for the tune of $5,000? I didn't give her permission. I'm speaking. I'm sorry. Speaking. I'm sorry, ma'am. Right now. She acknowledges that she didn't have permission. She says you really should have loved her work, and she's counterclaiming for her supplies <laughs> that she used. Well, that's dismissed. Thank you. Now, show me the pictures of before and after in your house. I when you left, she listened to me carefully. I'm sorry. When you left. When I left. And when you came home. Okay, well, see, this is before she did all the damage she did. This is right. one of my pictures. I took a picture of my dog. But that's before she did all the damage. And that is so Right, so this is a picture of your room with right. your little dog in the room. Right. right. Now show me what the room looked like. When she finished, it had black lights. I had a. Okay. All right. She smokes some very great hot or something. Black light is the black light she does. So, what do you ship? I'm speaking. Sorry, ma'am. Is that Wait. another picture you yes, want me to look at? Yes, ma'am, it is. I, I, Here you go. <laughs> that was an antique, a night scanner right there. No, she destroyed Yes, it was. Well, listen to me. You don't have a picture of this before, no. do you? No, ma'am, I don't. Because what is here, you have this table covered with a cloth. True. Because True. And I assume you covered the table with a cloth because if it was an antique, wonderful table, you would have exposed it so that you could have enjoyed. Speak. Yes, ma'am. Not. True. But True. it just matched my best friend, by so I had it's that. Pine wood. Oh, it's pinewood. It's, it's, it's to be painted. Did you paint a room with the piece of and that's your bedroom? Is yeah, that yeah, right? Ma look I'm she speaking did one, two, three, okay. yes, four, five, six. Sorry. It's not show and tell. You're not four. So your room has to be painted. What color was it before she painted it? White. Just a sec. Before she left you with the dog, did she tell you to paint her room? She was no, That's either a yes no. or a no. Good. And you should be able to find somebody to do that for you for $500. Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you. That's all. Oh, you excuse me. Step out. When I got home, there was a big hook on the nightstand. I figured, oh, boy. There was a hook, of, but that's fruit. You could smoke fruit out of that. I looked at my room. I couldn't believe it. It was like Woodstock nightmare. It's not just 
pot or whatever they say. Never gave her permission to get stoned and get high and paint my walls purple. I thought I would surprise her with some love and peace. See, that I would be surprised and happy for, you know, this is what I did for your birthday. I'm like... Well, I thought I was going to surprise her after I realized, you know, how much it hurt her. I guess I was wrong. I should have, you know, asked her. I didn't stay in the room. I stayed on the couch. I couldn't. It, it, it's like, oh my God, this is horrible. But it was, I truly meant to do it for a birthday and be a surprise. We are not talking for a while. Well, right now we're not talking. She actually kicked me out of the house and for her dog, you know, I miss her dog. That's about it. And now the next case. All parties in the matter of Jones versus Hudson. Step forward. Betty Jones is suing her daughter, Shannon Hudson, and her husband, Aaron, for the return of belongings and harassment. Miss Jones, this is your daughter and your son-in-law. Yes. According to what I've read, you moved into their home at their request. Yes. Your daughter was going back to work. She has two small children. You were going to take care of the children when she went back to work. You were going to rent the basement of the apartment. You were paid $400 a month rent. Yes. And you have two dogs. Yes. They are service animals. Just for my own interest, what's the nature of their service to you? I have a disability that I have trouble with my legs of tripping and falling down. And I do have, when I'm really stressed, I can have seizures. And with all that, you were going to take care of two small children yes. and you lived in the basement. Yes. Is there an elevator to the basement? No, but there's access to go outside from the basement. Just curious. Anyway, you got into a brouhaha with your son-in-law over a couple of things. You were visiting a boyfriend. He doesn't have stairs, does he? No. You were visiting a boyfriend that you have that your daughter and son-in-law don't like. And while you were visiting this boyfriend that they don't like for one reason or another, there was a storm and your dogs were barking. So, Mr. Hudson, you couldn't the dogs were barking? No, I texted her. You texted her? And what did you tell her in the text? Look at me. Don't look down. Look over here. I told her that if she didn't come and shut the dogs up, I was going to beat them. No, no. Louder, right, so I can hear you. I said if she didn't show up and shut the dogs up, I was going to beat them. Let me go back for a second, Mr. Hudson. Had you told your mother-in-law that the dogs were barking prior to sending that nasty text? Yes. How did you tell her? I texted her. And what did you say to her when you texted her the first time? I don't recall. So how many times did you text her, Mr. Hudson? She would have it on her phone. So I want you to think about it. How many times did you text her? I don't recall. It was how many story. times did he text you? One, ma'am. Once! That's what I thought. And the one text was, you better come home and get your dogs or I'm going to beat them. To death, ma'am. To death. You have the text? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'd like to see it. You're an idiot, Mr. Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife won't tell you, I will tell you. Right there, sir. Oh, it's even better, actually. Did you see what your husband sent to your mother? I did. Well, you'd better get back here and shut up your blank dogs, because if they keep blank howling while I'm sleeping, I'm going to beat them to death. She says right away, as soon as she reads it, I'm on my way, getting dressed right now. Don't touch my dogs. Now, what did you say to your husband, Miss Hudson, when he sent that disrespectful memo to your mother? I was at work, Your Honor. Um, when you were I got, at work? I was at work. Um, when I got off of work, I had a text on my Uncross telephone. Uncross your arms. I had a text on my telephone from Aaron to my mother, and then she had asked me, why is he saying this to me? I said, I don't know. You guys are an adult. I don't know really what to say. I said, are you going to come get the dogs? And she said, yes, I'm on my way. And I said, okay, I said, I'm on my way there. I'll figure out what's going on. When I got there, me and my husband got into an argument because I told him that he was childish for sending the text. It shouldn't have been that way. Good girl. And when she got back there, I told her the same thing. I said, Why was she instead of involving me between the two of them, which is what they both like to do, and handling it as adults to each other, they will pull me into the middle of something like that when I had no idea what was going on. You know what was going on? He was acting childish yes, and disrespectful. 
And I don't know whether if somebody sent me that kind of a nasty text, whether I would want to go back and retrieve my dogs alone instead of calling the police and saying, could you please escort me there? She called you and said, would you please come home because you can maybe act as a mediator. Right. So there's nothing wrong with that. She acted actually appropriately. And we all did have a conversation once everything had calmed down. Did he apologize he to your mother? He did apologize. And she was asked, I asked her, I said, do you really think that he would hurt the girls? It was a stupid thing to say. It was. Don't make excuses for a man's stupidity. You'd be making excuses constantly. <laughs> Without getting into all of the other brouhaha that took place between you mm -hmm. and Aaron over here, you say that there is some property that belongs to you that is in their home. You're no longer living there. No, I'm not as of June 6th. What property of yours is still in the house? An antique table. This a is, table? Yes, a solid oak ta antique table. What did you use it for in your apartment? It was my dining room table. It is a dining room table. I do not have the table, Your Honor. That's not what I asked you. I said, where is it? It was in her things in the garage when she came to retrieve all of her belongings. So is what you're telling me it was in the garage? Yes. Who put it in the garage? Me and my husband. The two of you? We were told by the police to remove all of her things from the house to try and keep it to where when she came to get mm -hmm. her belongings, we were able to open the door to the garage and there would not be any more issues between the three of us. So we had removed everything. I had told her that if she wanted to bring an officer to the house, that I would be more than happy to let her come in. After we had went to court, the judge suggested that we set up a date to be able to get her, her to be able to get her things, even though we had tried on several other occasions to allow her to do that. We set it up for July 7th, I believe, and her and Brian came, and I helped her load the things. Did you help her load a dining room table? I did. Okay. Fine. What's next? The, from babysitting the children from May Forget 6th. it. Forget it. Keep going. Next. The money for the parts, the materials I bought to build the room in their basement for myself. Forget it. What else? That's it, Your Honor. Goodbye, Miss Jones. Your son-in-law acted disrespectfully to you. But that doesn't mean... But she also told the sheriff to he could not come in to identify my table, which was in her house, which she admitted to the sheriff was in her Goodbye. house. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Chairman. I was like, excuse me, step out. The police showed up and they told Betty she had to leave. They said that because I rent the basement and he was upstairs, there was nothing they could do. And they told us that we should handle this in the civil court. Because he threatened to kill my dogs. I don't hate dogs. I have two dogs at home because my daughter and my son-in-law are i'm just glad that, that it's over i'm tired of playing the games with her what they've always been everything's for them i think it's about time that it's come to an end that's it the end of story it's been a very very rocky relationship i think that relationship is up to her and this was the end for me mr smith it is my understanding that there is a medical reason that you have to wear that hat is that correct sir yes your honor because otherwise you know that that's not permitted in court Disrespectful. Yes, I know. So I must assume that that's accurate. Yes, it is, and I have a note if you need to see it. Okay. This is what this case is about. Two of you were getting married. You hired the defendant to do the catering for your wedding. Where did you find the defendant? I found him through my god sister. What does that mean? My god sister introduced me to Jarrell. They were mutual friends, and she introduced me to Had him. she ever used him in the past for catering? No. She knows that he caters, though, because he has a... Don't tell me what she knows. Okay. The question was, had she ever used him for catering in the past? No, ma'am. Did you get any references from him? No, ma'am. So you asked him whether he was a caterer? He said yes. Yes. And you told him when the wedding was, and when was the wedding? August 24th. How many invited guests were there? 250 people. That's not true. Shh. 250 people? Yes. And how many of the 250 people responded positively that they were coming? 150. How many showed up? About 150. Could it have been more than 150? No, ma'am. Could it have been less than 150? It could have. Were there tables assigned to everyone? Yes. Were there cards for people to know what table they were going to? No. How did people find out what table they were to be seated at? They seated themselves. So there weren't assigned tables? Well, I had a set amount of tables and chairs, but no one was assigned to a seat. Well, that's what I'm saying to you. No one was assigned to a seat. No, ma'am. Okay. Now, at the hall, you were to serve dinner. Yes. 
What time did the guests arrive? About 4.30. Was there any entertainment? Yes. And what kind of entertainment did you have? DJ. So there was dancing? Yes. Was there liquor? Yes, ma'am. Who provided the liquor? My family did. Okay. Mr. Smith was supposed to provide the food? Yes, ma'am. And how much was he to be paid for the food? I paid him $3,000 cash, and he was supposed to prepare enough food for 150 people. So your claim is that he didn't prepare enough food for 150 people? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And Mr. Smith is counsel into your contract. He did, in fact, provide food for everyone. He said there were more than 150 people. He said, and some of the people came in and were serving themselves, were taking more food out of the pots that he was preparing. Now, who was supposed to serve these people? He was supposed to plate the food, and I hired um, some family members to help serve the food. You hired family members? You mean family guest members? People who were coming as guests? No. They're young teenagers. I hired young teenagers to help serve the food because Jarrell didn't agree to serve the food. He agreed to play originally in the contract for 150 people. I'd like to see the contract. Originally in the contract for 150 people, he said $2,500. My fear was that I would run out of food. Just a second. Okay. Okay, so this was signed by all of you on the 29th of June, this agreement. It says that any modification of this agreement has to be in writing. Yes. So let me deal with your counterclaim first, sir. Your counterclaim is for the gratuity that you say is included in the contract. Yes, Your Honor. Show me where it's included. I may have missed it. Yeah. Here's my contracts. and uh, Is your contract signed? Yes, they are. I'd like to see your contract. There are two different contracts, Your Honor. The I'd first, like to see whatever ones you have. Both of them. Both are signed. Just, Just point out to Where's Officer Bird, please, where it talks uh, about a gratuity. Uh, back here, sir. That's the same contract. Thank you. Oh, well, this is a different contract. And you all signed this contract on the 29th. Yes, yes. Your Honor. So this one says client will pay the caterer a total of $3,000. Yours yes. showed 2500 That was the original contract. Shh. Client will also provide a tip to the caterer after the job is completed, which is based on the caterer's professionalism. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Okay. Well, that's not a good contract, sir. I mean, that's not a good contract because that is left up to them. It was supposed to be based on an no. hour, so it was five Listen. to six. Listen I stayed to until... Shh. Listen to me. 3.1 of your contract says the client will also provide a tip to the caterer after the job is completed, which is based on the caterer professionalism. That's all it says about the tip. That's what you're suing for. I never got the tip because they so-called lost the money. The money was stolen. No, no, no. And it no. also says that if anything extra was done, will be added to the total of three grand. Okay. The three grand is for actually everything. It's not for just uh, the food. It's for my services. It's for me going to get the food. No, but listen to me very carefully, Mr. Smith. I'm dealing with your counterclaim right now. I'm not dealing with their claim yet. And I want you to listen to me. This contract provides for $3,000. That's the only part of this contract that is clear. And it provides for $3,000 for your services on 24th. Correct. That's what it provides for. Any changes of that, any additions or anything else has to be specific and in writing. What I'm telling you with regard to your counterclaim is if you want to make a gratuity, a fixed part of your contract, then you make it $3,000 plus a 10% gratuity, $3,000 plus a 15% gratuity. But when you say it's based on your professionalism, which is what it says here in the contract, they're suing you because they say that you did not act in a professional way. I'm not saying I agree with them. I wasn't going to cut you off, Your Honor. Good. I'm not saying I agree with them, but they're saying they don't want to give you a tip. So you're not entitled to a tip. A tip is a gratuity. Okay. Okay. Your Honor, That's it. This is not a back and forth. Chant down. How much money did you get paid, Mr. Smith, is my question. How much money did you get paid from the plaintiffs? $3,000 that, for... That's what I want to know. That's the only amount of money that's stated in this contract, $3,000. Now, did your family come to the wedding? Yes, they did. And some of them ate? Yes, some of them did eat. 
And you say some of them didn't eat. That's right. Just put your hand down, Mr. Smith. Most of my family ate, but my husband's How do I know family that? did not eat. How do I know that? It caused the uproar, and I got his sister bashing me on Facebook, Listen, I don't saying care. that they were Listen no to food. me. Listen to me. It's not a lawsuit. Some of your family ate. Some of your family ate twice as much. Some of your family ate less. Some of your family that ate twice as much shouldn't have eaten twice as much. And I'm telling you that if you had 150 guests and his total for his catering, his food, his preparation was $3,000, which is his time in going to get the food, his time in preparing the food, his time in being there and serving the food, $3,000. How much is that a person? About $20 a person. $20, just a second. $20 a person for two different kinds of chicken, not in Which a buffet. Which only one so I, I, Not in a buffet so that people would go and get it themselves because you also wanted it for $3,000 plated so everybody could be served individually. I'm telling you that unless I have all 150 people here and I hear everybody who ate and everybody who didn't, you have no case. Your Honor, can you I have, say something? You can tell me whatever you want in 30 seconds. Yeah. That is no what case. he agreed for me to pay him was the 2500 When I asked him if he could, I did not want Your the Honor, buffet I sell. I, I don't. I have witnesses. I was, my fear was that I would run out of food. So I asked Jarrell, I said, will you plate the food for me? He agreed to plate the food for $3,000. But he said he would not serve it out. Listen to me. And that's why I'm we agreed by the contract. I'm dismissing your case. You have no case. But he ruined our you, wedding. I can well, never get my wedding day back. Well, well, well. I you have said that, I, 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 When you're winning, <laughs> you're not supposed to keep talking. <laughs> Judge Judy continues in a moment. Latina Opal and her husband Ricardo Frost claim chef Jarrell Smith ruined their wedding by not providing enough food. Now, they have no case. None. Your Honor, I have all the proof that I need right here. No, you have no proof. Here I don't is read a, Here's a plate books. of the last. These are. This is a picture of the last 10 plates he served to my guests out of 40 people. Yeah. This is what he served to my wedding party, a full plate of food. But the other That's of my guests served. did not get this. But in the contract, you, no, you were supposed to you plate. You have no case. In the contract, you, you have no case. To plate the food. Your case is dismissed. Goodbye. Why these are excused, Mr. I did everything I was supposed to do. They showed up an hour late. No, we did not show up late. And when I, my mom got to the reception hall, he wasn't even there. He had a pan of raw chicken that was not cooked yet. He had family members all in the kitchen. They were uh, taking proportions and just making their own plates. People were saying that my check bounced and that I didn't pay him the amount of money that he was supposed to be paid. I gave them a great deal because they were complaining about not having enough money. So I gave her a deal. It was humiliating, embarrassing, and I could never get my wedding day back, ever. He ruined it. I was making everything happen. I never told her no about anything because it was her special day. And I hope that he never gets to ruin another person's wedding day again. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter of Roberts versus Jones. Step forward. Tamara Roberts is suing her former landlords, Kevin and Tacinda Jones, for the return of her security deposit. The defendants claim Tamara moved out owing for rent and property damage. Ms. Roberts, you were a tenant of the defendants. Correct. You lived in their rental property for approximately a year? About 10 months. Were you on a month-to-month -month tenancy? No, I was on a year lease. And you lived there only 10 months? Yes. From when to when? From August 9th, 2012 to June 3rd, 2013. When you moved out, you said you wanted your security deposit back. Yes, I gave him a 30-day notice and requested for my security deposit to be returned within 21 days. Now, you said you were on a year lease, so you were leaving before the lease was up. Yes, I had major problems from the moment I moved in. I had backed up sewer. Not the true, Your Honor. I don't want to hear you yet. That, she's did, not telling the you, truth. Did you hear what I said? I don't want to hear you yet. Listen to her, then I'm going to listen to you. Then if I want to listen to somebody else, I will. Then I'm going to make up my mind, and then I'm going to go have lunch. <laughs> now, you moved in and signed a lease. Can I see actually, a copy of your lease? I didn't ever get that after I moved in, so I actually never got to sign a lease. So you didn't have a written lease? We had a written lease, but I had no, not my signature on it. You have a copy of her lease? No, Your Honor. I, and do. You I have my... Do you have a copy of a signed lease? I have a copy of the lease. I don't have, I didn't have Listen to me. L no, I do Ms. not. Ms. Roberts. I have a copy of Listen the Listen to me, Ms. Roberts. Put the paper down. 
a written contract requires a signature from both parties. Otherwise, you're a month-to-month -month tenant. Okay. Fine. Before you argue with me about that, that really works to your benefit. Okay. That means that you didn't leave the property early. Okay. Do you understand? I understand. So you don't have a contract, then you are a month-to-month -month tenant. Okay. Fine. Did you pay rent in the month of August 2012? Yes. September? Yes. October? Yes. November? Yes. December? Yes. January? February? Yes. Speak? March? Yes. April? Yes. May? Yes. No. Just shh. Actually, since there is a counterclaim here, because Mr. and Mrs. Jones says you did not pay rent in May. I have the receipt. Shh. I'd like to see the rent receipt for mm -hmm. May. Okay. I paid. Uh, I'll take a look at all of them, by okay. the way. Thank you. I have March, I have April, and I have another one for April. Yeah, because I paid him, uh, the I gave my 30-day notice, and I paid Not my true. rent. And Shh. Listen, you know, you may be right, but I'm going to throw you out. Because now this three times, I said to you, don't interrupt her. No, you don't have a receipt for May's rent. Um, is the answer. You do not have a receipt for May's rent. Advance. I don't know if you paid it or not. You it's don't right have there. a receipt from it. It's right there. No, it isn't. No, 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 no. I have two payments I made in April because I gave my No, you have, you have no rent in February. The fact that you say this is May's rent doesn't mean it's May's rent. You have no receipt for February. That one I couldn't locate. You have every other month. You have no receipt for February. So you owed him February. No, I paid. Well, I can't tell that. He says you owe him May's rent. He you have every other receipt. Listen to me. You have every other receipt. You do not have May's rent. Which he says you owe him. Now, how much was your security deposit? Five sixty-five. How much was your rent? I paid five thirty. So, if you don't have proof, and he says now, now it's almost time for you to speak. Did she pay you May's rent? No. And she has no proof she paid May's rent. She has all the other proof, but no proof for May. So you're not entitled to your security but deposit I back because. You live. I gave him my 30-day notice, and he did not give me an itemized statement or my deposit within 21 days after I got Don't out. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? No. Well, I'm going to repeat it, and then I'm not going to repeat it again. Put your hands down. And after everything I'm going to repeat I it, and I'm not, listen to me, I'm not going to repeat it again. I dealt with, the mold, the uh, backed-up sewer, the constant, all the, the, when I moved in, the place was nasty. It was absolutely unlivable. Then you shouldn't, shouldn't have moved in? I had to. I had no money and nowhere else to go. Miss Roberts, listen to me. This is a court. I have plenty of evidence here of wh what I had to live through. I don't care what you had to live through. I'm not your mother. Yeah. You're and a grown-up. everything I And you can don't live to... in a place, you don't live in a place, and you have children, that is uninhabitable and pay. And I have and and I pay. Done, I talked to the housing authorities, and the code enforcement. I've fine. made complaints. So far, he owes you $35 from your security deposit because you lived there the entire month of May, according to you. So you moved out June 3rd. So return I of security my, deposit I... claim. You want May's rent? Yes. Well, you just got May's rent because you kept her security deposit. Yes. And she also owed me from denying my handyman access. No. I had my attorney send her a letter. Don't speak. I had my attorney send her a letter. She was complaining about her tub being stopped up. We went over there multiple times. She wouldn't let us in. One time mm -hmm. I went over there, her car was in the driveway. She wouldn't answer the door. No. Another time she decided she's going to go out of town. She left her 15-year-old son there, but he's not allowed to open the door when she's gone overnight. When well, he probably shouldn't have been left there anyway on yeah, the property unsupervised. I want you not to speak now. We're also, done. when she moved out, she moved, sent me a text three o'clock in the morning, letting me know that she has moved out. I'd like to see the text. Letting me know that she has moved out and the place is fine. Who sends, Listen, a who sends a text three in the morning? Am I speaking? Maybe your wife lets you get away with that jab. That's your husband? You yeah. let him get away with that? Talking over you? You let him get away with that? Talking <laughs> over you? Uh, that's about a minute in my ass. I didn't send it at 3. I guess that's when you received it, but that's not when I sent it. Who sends a text at 3 in the morning? I didn't. What are you, crazy? Both I of didn't you? send Goodbye. it. Goodbye. Thank you. Case is dismissed. Counterclaim. Claim. Counterclaim. Goodbye. You don't know when to be quiet. Already warned oh, you. Excuse me. Step out.
it was disgusting. It was smelly. It had backed up sewer. Um, just the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Why would somebody live in a place that was totally uninhabitable for 10 months? I cried. I was like, I couldn't believe it, it was so disgusting. And it took me four days to clean up the place. If I walked into a place and was uninhabitable, as soon as I walked in, I would have turned around and walked out. The handyman would come at late hours of the night and they would give me no notice, no, 20, no notice at all. He was complaining about something that needed to be repaired. I would send my guy over there to fix it and she would deny him access. I was in Florida when I agreed to rent the place, so I didn't even get a chance to look at the place. So her, act, her words say one thing, but her actions say something totally different. I won't be doing it long distance again. <laughs> yeah. I just moved forward, you know, she's done. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter, Patterson versus Witherow. Step forward. Erica Patterson is suing her nephew, Caesar Witherow, for bail money after he was arrested on a DUI. Mr. Witherow, the plaintiff is your aunt. Yes, ma'am. Is that your mother's sister? Yes, ma'am. Now, you were arrested for what? For a DUI. And bail was set at how much? 3500 How many times had you been arrested for DUI? A couple times. Well, a couple is two. Two or more, about three times. So it was more than a couple? Yes, ma'am. Ever been arrested for anything other than a DUI? Yes, ma'am. Like what? Assault and batteries, drug possessions. But this particular time when you had been arrested on a DUI, your bail was set at $3,500. Yes, ma'am. Because you had a serious rap sheet. Yes, ma'am. Did you call your aunt from jail? Yes, I did. Is your mother alive? Yes, ma'am. Did you call your mother? No, ma'am. Is your father alive? No, ma'am. Do you have sisters and brothers? They're younger. Who is this? This is my fiance. Was she your fiance then? Yes, ma'am. Did you call her? Yes, ma'am. Did you ask her for your bail? She wasn't able to do it at the time. Did you ask her? Yes, ma'am. And when you asked your fiance, what did she say to you? She just told me that there's no money right now. We pretty much were tied up in paying bills and rent. So you asked her to bail you out? Yes, ma'am. She said, no, you didn't call your mother, so then you called your aunt. Yes, ma'am. And the purpose of your calling your aunt was to bail you out of jail. Yes, ma'am. And she did bail you out of jail. Yes, she did. Did you pay her back for the bail? No, ma'am, I have not. Why not? I feel I don't owe her any money. When you called her, Mr. Witherow, mm -hmm. and asked her to bail you out, did the words, Auntie, please, could you bail me out? I promise you I'll pay you back. That's what everybody says when they call up and beg somebody to bail them out of jail for a big chunk of dough. Please, please, because, you know, I haven't been a good boy. Because Anthony knows that you haven't been a good boy, that you have two, three, or more DUIs, that you've been arrested for assault, battery, drug possession, that you have a whole long rap sheet. And so she knows that there's a strong probability that you're going to blow this bail. So words... Auntie, please, if you could bail me out, I promise I'll pay you back. Does that sound right? Right. Yeah, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if I were you, Auntie, I wouldn't bail you out. Now, did you pay his bail? I did pay his bail. And he's lying. She, she was in jail. That's why she couldn't bail him out. What were you in jail for? A DUI. You see, my only problem with you is, actually... That you were a social worker? Yes, ma'am. And they garnished your wages? Yes, ma'am. Until this was all paid off? Yes. Well, you have to learn not to throw good money after bad. Yes, but I didn't raise him like this. I raised him to be an upstanding young man. No, well, evidently, you missed the mark. He missed it by a long shot. Yeah. Because he promised me. He knows my lifestyle. He knows I don't make a lot of money. He knows how I struggle. He told me he was going to get his life together. He was going to pay me back. And that he would use his financial aid. He was going to go to school when he got out of jail. He did go to school, but he didn't pay me back. Anything you want to say? Oh, man. Charge him for the plaintiff in the amount of $3,500. Thank you. How does that excuse you may step out? I raised him to be, you know, an upstanding young man. My auntie is very controlling when it comes to it. She's, uh, she's a good mother figure, but she likes to put uh, her foot on your neck. This isn't the way I would think that he would act. I think that when I told him they're garnishing my wages, that he would step up and pay that bill. As far as it is, it is what it is. I guess I got to pay the bill back now. You know, get your life on track. Leave the hood rats alone. No more drinking and driving. It's not cool. Aspire like you're supposed to do. You know, he's very talented. I hope our relationship stays strong. Uh, she's still my aunt. She's still my mother. At the end of the day, we're still family. I'm hoping that, you know, we can can mend our relationship. Continue from there. But hopefully we can rebuild and continue to be, um, you know, let him continue to be my son like he's always been. Step up. And now the next case. All parties in the matter of Iovino Cox versus Panzarella step forward. Valerie Iovino Cox is suing animal welfare president Joseph Panzarella 
for vet bills resulting from a dog attack. Let me see if I can very simply put this in the context that I understand. You decided to rescue a Doberman yes. that had been stranded by Hurricane Sandy. You contacted the defendant who runs a rescue operation. Had you ever rescued a dog before? No. What prompted you to do it this time? I've had a Doberman in the past, and I always knew that eventually I would want to get a new one. And a friend of mine had told me about this one-year-old Doberman, and I thought it'd be time that I go and look at him and see if he had looked at him, or did he bring him over to you? No, I went to his facility. Okay. You contacted the defendant who runs a rescue operation. Describe that facility, Mr. Panzarella. The facility was destroyed by Sandy, so we brought all the animals to a makeshift facility that we made. Um, How many animals did you have? All together, probably. And when you rescue a dog, you make a donation to your facility? Is Sometimes, that what you if, do? If Sometimes. You have money, yeah. Okay. So you went, you looked at the dog, you liked the dog, you took the dog home, and you made a donation. Is that correct? Yes. And what was your donation? $50. And on what date did you take the dog home? Friday, May 24th. And when you brought the dog home, you already had a dog. You had a small dachshund. Yes. And at some point, the Doberman attacked the dachshund. Yes. On what date? Same date. Same day. Yes. And you want Mr. Panzarella to do two things, to pay your vet bills. Yes. And to return your donation. Yes. I would like you to give me the legal theory that you think you're entitled to either have your vet bills paid by the defendant or get your donation back. I would like you to tell me what well, legal theory you're using. Okay, I did not adopt the dog. The dog was coming home with me on a trial weekend. Right. Based on that the dog got along well with my dog. Right. As you well. voluntarily took the dog into your home. Yes. Nobody forced you. Yes. But I also was told that it was a very pet friendly dog, people friendly. So based on that, I took the dog home. So who cares? So I'm trying to figure out what the dog legal home. theory you have that you think it might not be a you. legal theory. Just but a second. Fact. You want to answer that yes, question? Sir. May I help? Perfect. Absolutely. Well, Your Honor, we feel that the dog we brought home... I don't care what you feel. I asked a very simple question. On what legal basis you can either sue in contract, there was no contract, negligence, he wasn't negligent. If anybody was negligent, it was your wife failing to supervise the dogs. Let's say she had brought the dachshund home and you had the Doberman, and it was just for a trial weekend, and what she's suggesting is the dog still belonged to the rescue, right? Mm -hmm. And if you brought the dachshund home and your Doberman that you had home ate the dachshund, right? Mm -hmm. You think that he would be able to sue you? I believe I would help pay the vet bills at least, Your Honor. I don't care what you feel. What you feel is not important. I'm asking you what legal basis... The dog was do you... not mine. I did not legally adopt the dog. The dog was not mine. It was well, yeah. in my home for a temporary weekend. Correct. The dog legally up. belongs to nobody. It was a rescue. You have no legal basis to sue him for your dog. Okay, when I immediately bill. called after Dillinger, the Doberman, attacked my dog, it took them three days to come get the dog. So what? She was in fear of her life at the moment. So bring it to a shelter. I should bring have it to a shelter. I should have if you're in fear, you like bring it to a shelter. You have absolutely zero legal basis to sue the people that run a rescue operation from turning over a dog to you that you went and selected yourself, having been a prior owner of Dobermans, mm -hmm. then you know sometimes Dobermans are good dogs, and sometimes they cannot be good well, dogs. The dog. And they're big dogs. I and you're, I'm speaking. Okay. And you have a big dog that's a year old who has been through a hurricane, probably through several different places, so you don't have a dog that has a stable first year. That's also something you knew, and you were a prior owner of Dobermans. You took it into your house? That's your problem. Right. And I'm going to tell you this. If you had a child come to visit you and the child was bitten by the Doberman, they would sue you and you would be responsible. Not him. You. Do we have a right to ask for help with the vet bills or shouldn't he not have insurance to help us pay for these bills? He doesn't have to do anything. You took the dog into your home. It's your responsibility.
It's not his responsibility. He's a charity. Well, I took the dog home based on the facts. Goodbye, Miss Cox. I don't care. Based on. Okay. Based on. You buy a year old Doberman and you don't know You're the right. history You're of that right. dog. You're right. The history of that dog. So take the responsibility right. of it. It's your bad. Take the responsibility for it. It's not his Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, excuse. You may step out. I took the dog home in good faith that he was a friendly dog to other dogs and it wasn't. We spent a lot of time there. We introduced the dogs outside the house on neutral ground. I feel that he should have been responsible for just the human decency. We walked the dogs. We got them to know each other. We went inside the house. We had the dogs on leash inside the house. He never asked how my dog was. My dog was brutally beaten. She did not listen to the direction that she was given. In the vet for almost a week, it was terrible. It's an unfortunate incident, but she put that dog in a position where that dog failed. It is what it is. I, I agree with Judge Judy. That dog is a very nice dog, and the dog is now living in a, in a forever home that we got him into, and there hasn't been an incident since. You may be seated. Folks have a seat. Which one of you two ladies entered into the contract with Mr. Ralston's bus company? We both did. Your, uh, I did. I'm sorry. You did? Yes. And you are? Sheena Wells. Ms. Wells, was it a written contract? Yes. May I have it, please? Yes. So this is what I gather. You rented a party bus. You were having an event. You'll tell me about what event. You rented it from Mr. Alston. You paid for it in advance. And according to you, you didn't get what you paid for. Correct. You want your money back, plus, 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 plus other things, but mostly you want your money back. Yes. Now, a type of event, I'm just trying to test myself for my own entertainment. Type of an event was LNO, Ladies' Night Out. Yes. Oh. <laughs> it's, like it's not a birthday, it's not an anniversary, but LNO, Ladies' Night Out. Yes. And you were going to Atlantic City? We were going to New York. New York from? Detroit, Michigan. Oh, you will pick up at the MGM Casino? Yes. In Detroit, Michigan. That's in Detroit. I see. $1,300 plus a tip for driver, gas and lodging. And you were providing a party bus? Yes. How many people were supposed to be on the bus? Back out, 14. How many people were in your party? <laughs> 18. Okay. So you have several complaints. One of their complaints, Mr. Ralston, is that when your bus came, it came late. What time did it come? He actually didn't send our bus, period. He sent a smaller vehicle, which was a Lincoln Navigator, which is nothing that we ordered. And I have photos of that as well. I'd like to see a it. A stretch Lincoln Navigator. I'd like to see it. Mm -hmm. and, what, and what time did the Lincoln Navigator arrive? It was after 1. So he was supposed to be there at 1230? Yes. Okay. Well, clearly, this was an inappropriate vehicle for 14 people. She says 18. You say 14. Right. Clearly, I'm looking at this photograph, and this mm -hmm. is an inappropriate car for 14 people. First of all, you sent it late. Got there at 1 o'clock, right? Yes, ma'am. And why did you send it? I explained it to Ms. Wells that uh, I would be about 30 minutes late because we had a previous run, and then we got back, we had to clean the bus up. Is this your company, or were you the driver? No, no, he's the driver. I'm the owner. You can stand up with him. So you were 30 minutes late and sent the wrong vehicle because you didn't clean up the right vehicle in time, correct? No, Your Honor. Well, that's what he says. I understand what he says, but that's not correct, Your Honor. Well, mm -hmm. you want to tell me what's correct and tell me your last name. My last name is Couch. Mr. Couch, you were the driver? Yes, I was, Your Honor. What time did you get to the plaintiffs to pick them up? I arrived at MGM at 12.02. I contacted the plaintiff before that around 11.30 and informed them about him not having the bus ready. Okay. And what time was the bus going to be ready? At first, Mr. Austin said the bus was going to be ready at 2 o'clock. I called the... 2 a.m.? Yes, Your Honor. I called the plaintiffs to inform them that he was saying 2 o'clock, and that's when they told me that wasn't acceptable. Right. Yes, and I informed them that he said for me to come and get you in the Navigator, load the Navigator up, and then once the party bus was ready, he'll get it there, and we can switch everything and head to New York. Okay. So the first thing we know is that they didn't get what they bargained for because they got a Lincoln Navigator instead of a bus. And I don't know how many people you're supposed to crowd into a Navigator, especially for an overnight, but certainly not 14. But what time did the bus actually get there, is my question. The bus arrived once we got to the Paris, and that was around 1 o'clock. Your Honor. No way. <laughs> no way. 
That's impossible. It, your Honor, Paris is only, is only five yeah. blocks from... Well, but first you tell me that Mr. Alston said that the bus wasn't going to be ready until 2 a.m. Right. How did they, it get there 10 to 1? The driver called me on the phone and said that the, that the bus was ready and that he was already downtown. At, he was doing service. It took him at, about 10 minutes to even get the navigator out, out of, of the, the circle, lot. circular structure at the casino. Okay, <laughs> okay. next thing. <laughs> next thing. Did you drive the bus? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Was the air conditioning working? The air conditioning was working, Your Honor. Was the air conditioning working? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. We even have proof of him unbuttoning his shirt because he I'd was like so I'd like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> his jacket, I also have photos of his jacket being taken off while he was driving his suit jacket and is hanging on the chair. Yeah, because I was going on a 10-hour drive. No, no. Sit down, Mr. Couch. I'll Bring you up again if I need you. <laughs> when for the first time, Mr. Ralston, did the plaintiffs call to complain to you that the bus was not air conditioned? They that never told me that it wasn't. They never complained. They never did. They never you did. mean before today? They, they never told they, you that they, the bus was not air conditioned? After they got back, you know, from the office. After the, uh, they got back, back, they were saying that uh, they had some complaints. Uh, well, uh -huh. Mr. Ralston, so my question to you is a simple one. Mm -hmm. When for the first time did the plaintiffs complain to you that the bus was not air conditioned. I'll tell you, I'm talking about five or six days afterwards. They five said, to six days yeah, afterwards, yeah. yes. What did they complain to you? Well, I complained to them about they trashed my bus and they knocked my one now. Is your answer to my question, Mr. Mm -hmm. Alston, that neither of these two ladies complained to you that the air conditioning wasn't Never. working properly? Never. We actually called Mr. Alston about Two days after our trip, all three of us were on the phone. I did the talking with Mr. Austin. He cut me off before I can actually go through everything. I was very calm. He got very belligerent over the phone. What do you mean he cut very belligerent? What does that mean? Oh. He was talking over me. He wouldn't allow me to speak. I kept saying, can I ask you a question? And what my question was going to be is, are you saying that you don't feel that you owe us a refund? Before we can give him our complaints, he said that we trashed his bus. If I can interject really quick, and he said that we didn't tell him, every time we called him to give him an update on our horrible trip, we reiterated each thing, and he would tell us that we were giving him a heart attack. Y'all just enjoy y'all's trip. Stop calling my phone. Quit calling me. And he stopped answering the phone. Was the air conditioning working on the bus? I will give this. The air and conditioning works. <laughs> The air conditioning worked about 35% of the time. The other 65%, it was blowing hot air on top of being 18 ladies crammed in a party bus. So it was very hot, and it was approximately 85 degrees this weekend. Did you discuss the air conditioning with Mr. Couch? Oh, yes. Um, all of the attendees did because we're like, we're hot. Turn on the air. What, what is going on? It's hot. We can't breathe. He's like, it's on. You can't feel it. It's on. You can't feel it. No. And we knew that immediately, even with us being picked up at night, we knew that that air was not working. <laughs> what is the age of this bus? Give me the it's, year, uh, a model. 2000, 2004, 450. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see the paperwork on the bus. Judge Judy, may I speak? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Then. Couch. I'm not sure if he called the business or if he called his son directly, but the bus driver, more than one young lady that was on the bus overheard the driver speaking with... You can't tell me what somebody overheard unless you heard it. Our witness did, you our hear, witness did hear it. Up here. Tell me your last name. Barry. We was driving and I was sitting next to Mr. Couch on the bus as a passenger. And he called Mr. Austin's son and was like, um, there's no air on the bus. And you told me to prop that window open. It just flew off in mid-drive. <laughs> So now, it's not funny at It's not all. funny because it when, you have, funny to us. when you have 18 women on a bus, and we have that is photos. a panic attack. He told him to get off the bus on a freeway and go back and get the window. We do have pictures of the missing window as well. I want to see the year and make of the bus, Mr. Ralston. And Judge, I know what... Shh. All right, so the bus is 13 years old. Yes. And they have used my bus from 09, and here it is. We have a picture with it. What just, used who used the bus? These Don't, ladies. Oh, that's good. Don't show me anything. These ladies had used your service before. Down through the years. Shh. The ladies had used your service before. Yes. Since 2009. Yes. Have they always paid you? Yes. 
And that's why you continue to service them. Yes. Have they ever asked you for a refund because the bus wasn't functioning? No. Well, why do you think they're doing it now, Mr. Alston? Because uh, they were on the road for, fi- for uh, 30... For, uh... No, no, I'm asking you, so I want you to understand my question. Uh-huh. You said they've used it regularly since 2009, so mm-hmm. they are familiar with your service. Yes. And they come back time and time again mm-hmm. to use your service, and you mm-hmm. provide the service, which yes. suggests to me that in the past they have been happy with your service. Yes. Yes. And you have been happy with them as clients. Otherwise, mm-hmm. a smart person would not rent their party bus to them again. Yes. My question is, why do you think that this time, mm-hmm. unless there was something wrong with the service, that they are complaining? Yes. The, yes, uh, what? Uh, because it was it was uh, 18 of them. The complaint was when I told them that 18 people was too many. And they was uh, the itinerary where they going to New York and for two days. But they went to Ohio. They stopped there. They got uh, went to night. What does that have to do with lack of air conditioning, sending the wrong bus? But, no, no, that was the bus that they are. Uh, what? No, you sent them the wrong vehicle first. No, you, you know, Your Honor, uh, they, on, their, on, their, on their navigator, I told them I will complicate them with their... Uh, they said they want a couple of stops downtown. I said, well, F5, you going downtown Detroit for a couple of hours? I said, well, if I'm going to be 30 minutes late, do you want me to send an alligator to take you out there? Mr. Ralston, you have trouble off? talking me, sir. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And Tamara McPherson claim limo service owner James Alston is responsible for ruining their ladies' night out. James is countersuing, claiming the ladies damaged his party bus. Now, you have to give them back their money. They didn't get what they bargained for. They Mm -hmm. bargained for the same kind of trip that they had since 2009 from your Mm -hmm. company. A comfortable, professional way of spending two days that 18 young ladies plan... Put your hand down, Mr. Couch. That 18 Mm -hmm. young ladies plan for over a long period of time, probably saved up some money for a long period of time, and had been happy with your service before. Had Mr. Couch ever driven you before? Yes. yes. Ever had any trouble with Mr. No, Couch? No, he actually requested him. He requested him. So I cannot think of any reason, unless I know something about their psychiatric history, about mm-hmm. why 2009 they used you. Did they mm-hmm. use you in 2010? Yes. 2011? Yes. No. 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 How many times, this is going to be terrific, how many okay. times did they use your company other than this trip? Let's see, three. Three other times. Mm-hmm. All paid for? All satisfied. Mm-hmm. Mr. Ralston, this was not an appropriate trip for them. You arrived late and the bus was defective. The air conditioning wasn't working and I would sue you too if I had to be on a bus from Detroit to New York and back on a bus where the air conditioning worked only 35% of the time. That's absolutely outrageous. Now, did you have to pay for him to sleep? Yes. yes. How much did this company's part of the trip cost you? Um, I know you gave him $1,300. Yes, we mm-hmm. did. Plus the $200 that we pay couch, our driver. For what? For driving. Well, that's your prerogative. You didn't no, have no, to no, 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 no. We that agreed, was agreed to upon pay with him. Austin. Austin didn't pay him. Just a second. That's not That's in the here. contract. Yes, it is. It's no, it oh. just says tip. You didn't have to pay him a tip at all. If you thought that he was an inappropriate driver, you didn't have to pay him a tip at all. Well, I may I filled out the contract. I may have I don't written care the what wrong you feel. word. I don't care what you feel. Mm-hmm. A okay. tip is, it doesn't say how much the tip was going to be. You could have given him $5 if you wanted to. That's good to know. <laughs> so far, he owes you $1,300. Was there any other out-of-pocket? Yes. What? The room that Terrence was not able to sleep in because we had a busted window and he didn't want to leave it unattended. Um, Do you have proof that you paid yes. for that room? In addition to that... No, no. Okay. Just get me the receipt for his room with his name on it. It does not have his name on it, Your Honor. We have a copy of our bank statement showing the payment to the hotel. No, we have the reservation. And the reservation. Does it have his name on it? How can no. we get the They didn't for ask him the, his name. the okay. person's name. What else? Well, we feel that our lives were at risk, and so were okay. everyone. Thirteen hundred dollars judgment for the plaintiff. The window was knocked I'm out sorry, of your one thing I want yes, to show ma'am. you: the blowout, the blowout tire, tire, the rest of the Listen the sealed Listen emergency window is, at the hey, top. Hey, stop it! Now, he is refunding to you what you paid him for the trip, which was $1,300. That he's going to do. This is not window one, two, or three. This is what he's going to pay you. Okay. Now, the window was knocked out of your bus? Yes. Now, it was knocked out of your bus for either of two reasons. Mm-hmm. Either because your driver tried to open the window or because one of the women tried to open your window because there wasn't enough air in the bus. Either way, you're not getting compensated for it. 
We understand each other, Mr. Ralston. Yes. Judge for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,300. You count the claims dismissed. That's all. How does that excuse you? May step out. You know, they got on camera on the bus to my shop several times. Inspected the bus. We feel that we were old for pain and suffering. Our lives were in danger. And if a bus was all that wrong with the bus, the If the bus had have tipped over, we could have died. The stairs were rusted out. Ladies' heels were falling in. They could have tripped. Why would they leave from the get-go? They got a free ride. It was hot. We could have had a heat stroke. Got to look it up and got a free ride to New York. Go to show you don't rent to some hood ladies. Ms. LeBlanc, can you rent a house to the defendants, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And how long have you rented the house to them? Since uh, th September 29th. Of this year? Yes. Children, you have children, they have dogs. Do you have dogs too? No, ma'am. But they have dogs? Yes, ma'am. And it is your claim that one of their dogs bit your daughter? Yes, ma'am. On what day do you claim this happened? September 29th, ma'am. You mean the day they moved in? The day they moved in was um, September 16th. Their lease started October 1st. We allowed them to move in two weeks early. They moved in September 16th. The incident happened on September 29th. Yes, ma'am. And their children and your little girl were playing together. Yes, ma'am. Did you witness what happened with the dog? I was around the corner. I That's not my question. My question is a legal one. Did you witness what happened with the dog? No, ma'am. Okay. This is your daughter? Yes, ma'am. She's six. Why don't you come up here? Hi. Hi. Can you tell me your name? Caspiana. Caspiana. That's a very long name. You know how to spell that? K-A-S-P-I-A-N-A. -A -A. If I would have named one of my children Caspiana, they would have killed me. <laughs> Only got five letters. Caspiana, do you remember when the neighbors moved in next door? Um, September 16th. Well, that's very good. You have a good memory then. You listening to your mom? Hmm? Yes. Do your neighbors have children? Yes. They have children that you play with? Yes. And what about the dogs? Have you been in their house before with the dogs? Mm, no. This was the first time you saw the dogs? How old are the children of the neighbors that you play with? The girl I was playing with was six and... Uh... So she was your age? She's a nice girl. What's her name? Ava. Ava. And if you played with her before? Mm hmm Okay. Do you remember the day when you had that incident with the dog? Um, September 16th. I'm not asking you what the date was, but do you remember what happened? Like, he thought I was going to punch it somehow because I just had this glove. Then he just started growling, growling at me, and then he bit me. Where did he bite you? On this side, on the left. On your left side? He bit you with his mouth? Mm -hmm. Did it hurt? No. Was there blood? Mm, a little. A little? How much is a little? A little like when you cut your finger? No. More than that? More than that. Did somebody clean it off? Yeah, the hospital. Hospital. Do you still have a mark there on your side? Yes. Do you mind if I take a look at it in the back? Mm -hmm. Go with Officer Bird. He's going to take you, and you're going to come in the back over here with me. Good girl. Could I see that? Good. Oh, right there. I see that. Thank you for showing that to me. Oh, come on up, Caspiana. Come up. I'm finished. Your Honor, may I present photos? No. So it looks to me as if there's a, like a tooth mark there, right? One tooth mark, that's where it was. Not a whole big, long bite mark, but one tooth mark. And after the dog bit you, did it run away or did you run away? I ran away. Did the dog follow you? Mm -mm. Where did the dog go? Inside the house. So this happened outside the house? Mm -hmm. Was anybody else there when it happened? Mm hmm Tell me who was there, Caspiana. My mom, my stepfather, Blanca, and her husband. Well, your mom didn't see what happened, but she was just around the corner, so she didn't see what happened. Where was your friend that you were playing with? Beside me. So she was there. Do you know if she saw it? She did. And what about mm. the neighbors? Were they there? Yeah. Right from the house, did you go to the hospital? What they did to you at the hospital? They just put this band-aid to check how I was doing, and then they cleaned it. Okay, so you didn't get stitches or anything? No. No. Did you ever have a dog? Yes. What kind of dog did you have? Pomeranian Chihuahua. Small ones? Mm-hmm. 
like dogs? Mm-hmm. Do you think that neighbor's dog just got frightened about something? Yeah. What did you think neighbor's dog got frightened of? I think because I was going to punch it when it actually wasn't. When you say you were going to punch it, what kind of glove were you wearing? Just a black glove. A plain black glove or a boxing glove? Um, it was a toy one. A toy what kind of glove? Boxing a toy glove. boxing glove? Where did you get the toy boxing glove from? Ava and me were playing this game and then we just got it both for we can like play with my stepdad and then the dog thought I was going to punch it with it, but actually it wasn't. We are just But going you were inside. wearing the boxing glove. Was Ava wearing a boxing glove too? No, she just had one in her hand. But you had it on your hand. Show me what you were doing with it. I just had it like this the whole entire time. I was going to. Got it. Okay. You can go sit down over there. Okay. What else do you want to tell me, Miss LeBlanc? Your Honor, when they first signed the lease, the first thing they asked me... What do you... Just a second. Right now, they're still your tenants, I assume. Is that correct? Yes. All right. What I want you to do is to tell me what it is that you want. I want them to follow through with putting up a fence around the property as they asked me the day they signed the lease. I want them to reimburse my daughter for her circus training classes because she has missed over a month in circus training because of the strenuous activities that she had, if I can show you. No. And I want her to be reimbursed for her pain and suffering. She's got scars that she cannot okay. recover from. I've looked at the scar. The scar which is there is about anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch long. It clearly comes from the puncture wound. Looks like it from a puncture wound. Now it could be from a nail. You think a scratch. I'm not so sure, but clearly it came from your dog. They're not going to put up a fence around the house. If you want to put up a fence, put up a fence. If you want them to move, give them notice. How much I've time do you have? Sure, just a second. You want them to move, they may be just as happy to move. Give them a period of time. They'll pay rent until they move. And your daughter absolutely is entitled to, and you are absolutely entitled to, reimbursement for any of your medical expenses that you had, and something minimal for your daughter's pain and suffering. She is not, and having had a lot of children, I say this, and I say this from a position of strength, the little tiny scar that she has on her side is no bigger than what you would have if you had a mole removed from your side. So if you're going to subject your daughter to plastic surgery to remove that little tiny nothing that she has, then there's something wrong with you. Now, the question that I have to ask the defendants is, is it your intention to stay in the house? Well, speak. Don't shake your head. This is no, television. No, yes, we're not, we're not, we're not going to stay next to her. She's put us Fine. through much when more. When do you want to move? The end of the month. End of this month? Yes. Fine. How long is your lease? Well, right now, Shh. Just answer. two years. Two we years. have no water. What? We have no water. Just a second. So I your don't lease. Okay. Your lease is two years. She doesn't want you there anymore with your dogs. Is that correct? That's correct. Good. So you're going to allow them to move out and take no action with regard to any further action on the lease. Is that correct? As long as they pay you their rent up until the time they move out. Did you pay this month's rent? No, because our water was cut off on the 30th. And when we tried to turn it back on, they were the water company and still haven't paid it. And I've been talking to them for a week. Just one second. And so I don't have any water. So I wasn't going to pay until we got our water back on. Well, you're not going to get your water back on. Well, you're going to move. At the end of the month, we got to go a whole month without water. Well, just a second. You shouldn't go a whole month without water, sir, if you don't pay rent. Take the rent money. What was the rent money you were supposed to pay? We we also I, I'm speaking. But it's in your name, and they now won't let us to put me. it in our listen, name until y'all pay listen. it. So. Listen, I have no patience for you. I got you. How much is your rent money? 1800 a month. So you didn't pay this month's rent. So you should have it in the bank. Yes. Move! Tomorrow. Yes, Tomorrow. Okay. If you don't have water, you don't live in a place where you don't have water. It's the beginning of the month, the $1,800. Go put it down on another apartment and get out. Perfect? Perfect? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. But you have to compensate her for the dog bite. How much were your medical bills? They were approximately $1,000. Show me. Not approximately. This they is were, a court. They were covered by insurance. She's on Medicaid. You're irritating. You're an irritating person. <laughs> 
I've been doing this work for 40 years. Do you think I need somebody like you to tell me how to do my job? Of course not. I'm sorry. Great. So why don't you just be quiet until I look at you? Yes, ma'am. Judge Judy continues in a moment. Sade LeBlanc says her tenants, Colin Felch and Blanca Hopper, are responsible for damages after their pit bull attacked her six-year-old daughter. Okay, now, I've just gotten you out of your lease, and I told you what you're supposed to do. Do not pay her rent. Take the $1,800 that you've been saving for not paying rent and move tomorrow. Get a U-Haul, find a temporary residence, and move where you have water. I wouldn't live anyplace without water. Okay, so you have no unreimbursed medical bills, is no, that no. correct? Yes, ma'am. I have actually a different sense of this case than I did at first when I read the plaintiff's statement because the plaintiff wasn't present and certainly the thing that I respect is the little girl who was six years old told me the absolute truth. She was on the defendant's property with the dogs and she had a boxing glove on and according to her, and I didn't even push her any further, the dog thought that I was going to punch him with the boxing glove. Well, something happened to suggest to me that there was probably good reason for the dog to have thought that she was going to punch him with the boxing glove. So as long as you have no unreimbursed medical bills, I'm awarding you nothing except a dollar. And you get out, take your 18 That's all. Thank you. Thank you. I just excuse. You may step out. The dogs are clearly a res um they're they're just like their owners. I believe that she saw right through it from the beginning. She was out for money. Hard to deal with, mean, vicious. They're broke. They took our deposit and spent it on a cash car. We moved in. Their car got repossessed. No, I believe it was an accident, but I feel that the owners should take responsibility like anybody should. Our dogs were on our property. You know, we did everything we could. We were sorry that that happened. For myself, lesson is uh, do a background check. But we also understand that it wasn't something that we could have controlled or ever would want to happen to her daughter. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter of Maya versus Williams. Step forward. John Meyer is suing his niece, Tammy Williams, for the cost to replace his truck. John says Tammy got drunk and loaned the vehicle to her mother, who was also drunk. Tammy's mom proceeded to roll the truck and total it. Mr. Meyer, Miss Williams is your niece? Yes, ma'am. She is the daughter of your sister? Yes, Your Honor. Is your sister here? Yes, she is. That would be you. Yes, ma'am. Your lawsuit is marginally confusing to me, sir. Absolutely, I agree. Well, if you agree, then why didn't you fix it before you filed it? I did. I did. The, I'm not, uh, you know, really good with memory and stuff, but... Uh, this has nothing to do with memory. Okay. This well, has to I'm do going, with common I'm going, sense. I'm going for the person that took responsibility for my vehicle under the three things that I had told her and uh, she went against every one of them. Now that my entire 10 million viewing audience is confused, I will try to make it clear to them. You loaned Miss Williams your truck. Yes, ma'am. She was going to use your truck for whatever reason. She was going to use it for a period of time. And Miss Williams went out drinking with her mother. Miss Williams got loaded. Yeah. So did her mother, your sister. Miss Williams didn't drive home in the truck. Your sister has the keys, and she drives home in your truck. What happens to your truck? It gets rolled. It got rolled. Yes, ma'am. And destroyed. Act, act, yes, ma'am. While being driven by your drunk sister. The, the three things. Just, 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 uh, three things. Act, yes, while being driven it, it, by your drunk yes. sister, who got a DUI, right? Yeah. And you're not suing your sister who took the keys and drove drunk and totaled your car, you're suing your niece who got drunk and wouldn't drive the car. <laughs> Do you understand my confusion? I understand. Even Bird is confused. <laughs> Sorry, Bird. Uh, the bottom line is, is, is uh, when, when the truck was loaned to Tammy, I loaned it to her under three rules, three, three little things. Do not drive my dr truck drunk. Do not drive my truck to a bar, and no one else drives my truck. Okay, so I, I'm just, you know, I'm a bit confused, too, if she's my niece, and, you know, I expected her to follow these three simple things, and she's telling me I'll take full responsibility for anything that happens to your truck, okay? She put it on her shoulders. Sue your sister. Sister drove drunk. How old are you? 35. How old your mother? Mm, 
56, I think. 20 years older. I'm 52. 52. <laughs> I suggest both of you stop drinking. I already have. Your case is dismissed. That's all. Go see your sister. Why is that excuse? Did you step out? Tammy shouldn't have handed me the keys at the bar and said, here, Mom, don't let me drive before we ever entered the bar. I wasn't driving, and I am not responsible for what happened to the truck. She should have took responsibility when she uh, took the truck from my brother. He said that it was um, not drinking and driving, not taking the truck to the bar, not letting anybody drive it. Is these rules I laid down for loaning this pickup, the lies that just came out of that young lady's mouth. I went to the bar one time the night that my mom rolled the truck. I got a call from her, upset. She... <laughs> Uh, I know what I did wrong and I'm responsible for it. I drank too much and passed out and I don't know what happened after that until the truck was rolled. You know, okay, show me you can be responsible. He told me that I wasn't responsible numerous times and then he said that my mom was going to have to pay for it. As far as her and I don't care the rest of them? There is no family relation, so it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm, I'm done with them. I'm washing my hands. And now, all parties in the matter of Born Trigger versus Graham. Step forward. Noah Born Trigger is suing his former friend, Rebecca Graham, for his truck getting vandalized while it was in her possession. Mr. Born Trigger, did you ever have anything other than a friendly relationship with the defendant? No, Your Honor. Never dated her? We talked about a relationship, a but never dated her. A little louder, please, sir. Yes, we talked about a relationship, but I never dated her. You talked about a relationship? Yes. Just... For my own curiosity, sir, how do you talk about a relationship? Well, she was in a relationship and she lost her boyfriend. And? And she moved away, like 12 miles away. Well, 12 miles is not Pluto. It's just it's not far. And? And we proceeded to talk about a relationship. And well, how, how do you talk about a relationship? Those things just usually naturally evolve. She lost her fiancé. You call up, you say, would you like to have dinner? Would you like to go out for a cup of coffee? Can I buy you lunch? That never happened. No. We so never you just talked out. about a relationship. We did talk about a relationship, and I told How her. How do you talk about a relationship? That's what I'm trying to find well, out. Well, I, I told her I liked her. Oh, no, fine. That'll let like us start. Yeah. I like you. I like And she her. said. And she said, well, you know, she's a lot younger than I am. And I said, well, you know, I, I don't know you. If it turns out that we could have a relationship, you know, down the road, we probably would someday. Oh, okay. Very good. That's why I come right out of the gate asking the questions, little questions that plague me when I read sometimes a complaint and an answer that I'm not quite sure I understand. Sure. This is what this case is about. You loaned Miss Graham a truck, a truck that belonged to you, that you weren't using. You had had some sort of an injury, according to you. You couldn't work. Yes, Your Honor. You couldn't drive it. And you left this truck sit outside on your front lawn. The registration had lapsed and it had no insurance. She needed a truck because she was poor and she couldn't get her kids to and from school or to and from whatever. She needed a vehicle. You said to her, what's your first name? Rebecca. Rebecca, if you get the tags on this truck and the insurance, you can use it because I'm not using it right now. Yes, Your Honor. So she spent the money and she got the tags and she got the truck insured and she was using it. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you started to use the truck what month and year? May 2013. And you drove it in May? Yes, ma'am. And you drove it in June? Yes, ma'am. And you drove it in July? Yes, ma'am. So three months? Yes, ma'am. And you spent some money just on the tags and the insurance? Yes. And his property, um, his personal property, I also paid that. In Missouri, you have to um, have your personal property taxes paid before you can license a vehicle. And he had owed quite a bit. How uh, much? Uh, $126.11. All right, so you paid $126 for his property taxes because he didn't pay it. You couldn't register a vehicle unless you paid those taxes, so you took care of that. Yes, ma'am. Very good. All right. And then you're tootling along in the car on what date and time? It was right around the 15th, um, I would say. 15th of what? Um, Ju uh, July um, 2013. And you forgot to put gas in the car. So the car ran out of gas. Yes. So you left it at the side of the road and you... Went home or yes. went where I had, you a, I had a friend come pick me up, yes. A friend came pick you up and the next day you went back for the car? Yes. Next day you go back for the truck and according to you, someone looked as if they had vandalized the truck by taking a bat to it and hit the doors and hit the ceiling and hit the front and hit the sides, ripped everything off and Mr. Born Trigger wants the money that it's going to cost to fix his car. 
And your defense is what? My defense is when I borrowed the vehicle, he told me that I had complete access to it. If I wanted to do anything, any changes to it, he did not care. The only requirement was that I did not let anybody else drive it. When I left the vehicle overnight um, and I came back the next morning, it had been vandalized. On my way up to file a policeism, I got pulled over because he had reported the vehicle stolen when he, in fact, knew that it was not stolen. And? Um, I want to know what your defense is. Um, my car was in your possession. Because of your negligence, the car was left overnight on the side of the road. If it's true that, as we used to call it when I sat in the family court and did criminal work, we used to call it the some other dude did it defense. Okay. S-O-D-D-I. So some other dude bashed in the side of the car, did all the damage to the car. That was your defense. That's what I'm gathering. Somebody else caused the damage. Right. And, and I was willing to work with him on, on finally finding out who did it because, I, I mean, I have a pretty good idea to who did it. Who cares who did it? You go find out who did it. The car was vandalized because of you because you forgot to put gas in the car. Yes, ma'am. It was vandalized because of you. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I didn't do it. It was left. It was vandalized the... because of you. If you would have kept gas in the car, you would have taken okay, the car Okay, it would have been home. paid for. When, I, when we went and got insurance on it, I asked him if he wanted full coverage. He told me, no, ma'am. I wanted what liability. What year car is this? 2005. What year car? 1999. 1999 truck. Nobody has full coverage on a 1999 truck. Nobody in their right mind has full coverage on a 1999 truck. Well, I, I was vehicle. willing to because it wasn't my vehicle, and if anything happened, it would be covered for. He told me no. He wanted just liability. What do you mean he wanted? You were paying for it. You could pay whatever you want. You want to put full coverage on a 1999 vehicle? You paid for the insurance. Do it. He wasn't paying for the insurance. Yes, yes ma'am. Right. Now, you drove this vehicle home? Yes, the day it got vandalized. So it's capable of being driven. Yes. And you don't like it because aesthetically it looks terrible. Is that it right? Does. I got photos, yeah. May I see the photographs, please, Bird? Sure. The top ones are the before pictures, and then the others are the vandalism. Oh, this is terrible. Actually, this is terrible. Who do you think did it? Um, my mom is not an answer. My, my fiance that passed away, um, his wife, and I, I am sure because she has threatened to uh, vandalize and break in my house. She's broken into my house. She's vandalized um, vehicles that have been sitting in my driveway because she believes that I killed my fiance. Bert, could you take a look? Tell me what this car is worth. When did you purchase this car, Mr. Borntrick? I bought it new in 1999. Where is it now? It's at my house. Do you have an estimate to repair it? Yes, I do. How much is it? They're like ten to twelve thousand. What can he buy one for? Silverado. Silverado. Yeah, Silverado. At some point, it was a nice shape. Extended cab. It's like extended cab, three quarter. Why time. did you take this picture, sir? Which one? This one. That's just a picture how it looked before it happened. Yeah, you took this in April of 2010. Yeah, that's the, that's the only one that I had on file anymore because I just didn't have any more pictures. It had prior body damage. 29.25 says. Okay, very good. Listen, you can either have the car fixed or go and buy yourself another one. Same. 29.25, judgment for the plaintiff. That's all. Thank you. Step out. We was never in a relationship. He did have a relationship with me. He was telling me that he loved me. I mean, we talked about a relationship. You know, a boyfriend and girl were technically dating. I told her uh, if things go down, down the road, we may have one down the road. And the minute I told him I was not ready to sleep with him, all of this happened. But I hadn't talked to her for about six weeks before I got my truck back. So, no, there was never no relationship. Mr. Boyntrigger lied to Miss Judge Judy. She did not hear the whole truth. I just hope to learn to know people a little bit better before I trust them that far. Never trust a man. It's just hard to trust people. And uh, I learned the hard way. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter of Lopez versus Darrow. Step forward. Corinne Lopez is suing her neighbor, Alvin Darrow Jr., for damage to her fence caused by his dog and for harassment. How long have the two of you been neighbors? Seven years. We've been friends for 20 years. She rented property from us for 10 years. His peers I rented from, not him. That's right, but you know each other for 20 years. No. I've just met him when I moved next Seven door. years ago. Yes. I never knew him. All right. Your well, Honor. now you're neighbors. You share a common fence. This is 
Got each of you claiming that the other has been harassing them, and you claim that you put up a very lovely fence that Mr. Darrow's dogs destroyed. You want him to compensate you for the rebuilding of that fence. Mr. Darrow says there was normal wear and tear on that fence, and he's never seen the dogs claw at that fence? I have. Have you seen the dogs eat through the fence? I've seen her dog and my dog. She has a pit bull. They both go at each other at the fence. At the fence? Correct. You have a dog? Yes, I do. Dog stays outside? Yes. Dog in contact with his dogs? Oh, my dog kisses them because their head is through the fence. Mm -hmm. His dog's head's through my fence, and my dog would go up and kiss him. Okay, let's move this along. What do you want from him, Miss Lopez, and what do you think he did to you? Judge Judy continues in a moment, as says, her neighbor, Alvin Darrow Jr., owes for damage to her fence and for harassment. Alvin is countersuing for invasion of privacy and harassment. What do you want from him, Miss Lopez? Like I said, I moved in 2005. He was incarcerated at the time when Would I moved in. Would you just in. tell me what it is that you think he is responsible for? His dogs um, chewed up my fence, and he's refusing to pay for the damages, um, and he doesn't take care of his dogs. He never spends time with them and leaves them outside in the backyard. And they dig at the fence. So tell me what, this is a court. Tell me what it is that you want. You I want would like him to pay, to pay for the damages for to the my damage fence. to the his fence. His dog caused. Okay. When did you put the fence up? I put it up in 2006. Is it a wooden fence? It's a six-foot privacy fence dog ear. Do you have a picture of it when you put it up without damage? I have a picture of the behind my, with no damages on it. I'd like to see that. Okay. Here it is. The back side of my fence. Okay. I'd like to see. With no damages. Good. Well, there is some damage right over here in one spot, but that's really not what you're talking about. You're talking about the hole on the bottom. On the left so, side of my fence. Okay. And that's in one panel? No. it's um, There's seven panels. Out of seven panels, eight of them are No, 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 destroyed. no, no. We're not talking about this. No, no. The bottoms. From the center down. Talk about this. Yes, that's from the dogs. <laughs> oh, no. I want to see the hole that you showed me before with the dog's head through it. This is the whole side of my left side of my... Uh, I just want to see it. Is this your dog, sir? Yes, ma'am. What kind of dog is that? American Bulldog. It's cute. <laughs> got his head through that thing. He can get really hurt there. I fixed the fence right away because I didn't want my dog sticking his head through the fence. That's a combination of both dogs, Your Honor, not just one. The fence is only 3 16 and it warps very easy, so thin. And her dog and my dog go at it, and they pull the fence apart. Okay. Do you have a quote to repair this hole in the fence? No, I have the whole side of the fence. No, that's not happening. I have a quote for the whole side of the fence because well, it goes all not, the way down the line. Well, that's not happening. How much did it cost you to put up the whole fence in 2006? It was like 2200 Do you have the receipt? Yes, I do. Let me see it. I had a friend of mine put it up. Okay, privacy fence, six by eight foot panels was 30 each, and all of them were $634. Okay, what else? That's all. I just want him to pay for the damages his, cause, his dog caused. My dog did not have any partake in it. It used to be oh, well, his dog. Well, I don't dog. know whether your dog did or not. Maybe it was both dogs. He's going to give you $200 to fix your fence. What else? What else do you uh, want? Harassment. Tell me about it. I redid my front yard and the side of my yard. I, re I extended my porch. He didn't approve of me putting up a fence in the front yard, so he tried to run me over and took Did you it. file a police report? Yes, I did. I'd like to see it. I have it. a lot of police reports. No, I'd like to see it. Was this solar lights? Front yard solar lights around yeah. the landscaping. Right. And this one just Friday just happened. The solar lights on top of my fence pole. He started ripping the fence off, and he took off my solar lights that are on the top of the poles. What were you doing with the solar lights? He took them down. What were you doing with them? Oh, they're on top of my, all the way around my yard. And when did you put them up? In 2006. Were you taking down the lights? Yes, ma'am. Why? She called the police. 
and they came to my house. And? And the police looked at the property line and agreed it was my fence. He said, you can take them down. We'll wait for you because she'll probably call us back. So go ahead and take them down. So I took the post off the place. It's my fence. You took them down because it was on your property? Correct. Do you have a survey yes. of the property? Yes. She also surveyed it herself. I did too. Oh, and yeah. the city of Toledo and a survey company surveyed the fence. Do you have the report that indicates that the fence is on your property? Well, she had the fence. Well, it's not my answer. Yes, I do. She has the fence company, the estimate that she wanted the fence moved off my property onto her property when they replaced it. That's because I insisted Excuse on that. Me. So the fence is on his property. It's on my property. I told the fence company to move it over five I inches. Don't know that. So you took off the lights. I don't have a survey, and you don't have an expert. Now, I want to know why you took the lights off the fence. The fence is on my property, Your Honor. It clearly shows. This is from the it's city. It's been up there since 2006. What's wrong with you? It hasn't been that long. How long has it been up? He was incarcerated when it was I put don't. Up. I'm not no. speaking to you. How long has it been up? It looks old. Well, I pulled up in my me. driveway one day. Is and it was... five years old? Probably four or five. Why did you decide to take off the lights? Well, because it's my fence, Your Honor. It is on my property. You didn't take it off when she put it up. You didn't take it off a month after she put it up. Two months, six months, a year, two years. What prompted you to take the lights off when the police came? Well, she called the police on me and they came For out. For what? Talking to her niece. Her niece was talking to oh. me, so she called the police on me. Oh, I think one of you should move, actually. You want to tell me what your counterclaim is? Very fast. Very my, fast, Mr. My Dallas. counterclaim is... Uh, uh, her harassing me and invasion of privacy. How has she invaded your privacy? She has surveillance cameras trained on my house. Um, and so I've she got... has cameras up, and? And they're trained on my house. Is she not allowed to do that? Well, I mean, she harasses people that comes in and out of my house. My <sighs> witness is here where she harasses her coming in and out. Watch, she watches her monitor all day long, Your Honor. His girlfriend stole mail out of my mailbox, and I That's have a uh, police report for that also. That's why I put up a monitor. Judging for the plaintiff in the amount of $200, your portion of fixing the fence, everything else. Listen, somebody sell your house. Goodbye. Oh, you excuse me. Step out. It was on my property, and I stopped. He's got anger management problems. He gave her a hard time about being on my property. And he tried to run me over with the motorcycle. But uh, No, I didn't try to run her over. I don't... I don't expect the harassment to stop. I just want her to leave me alone. It's going to be on, ongoing, I'm sure. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter of Eldred versus Gaitlin step forward. 62-year-old Jerry Eldred is suing his ex-girlfriend, Elizabeth Gaitlin, for an iPhone, credit card charges, and bail after she was arrested for public intoxication. Mr. Eldred, the defendant is your former live-in friend, a girlfriend, friend... All of the above. All of the above. And you want a certain amount of money from her for a variety of things, some of which date back to 2012, like an iPhone. Well, that was this year. No, not according to your complaint. You said in 2012, she told me she had no place to live. She, I said she could move in with me. We became friends and had a casual, romantic relationship. I even bought her an iPhone. Right. The iPhone was purchased back in, I believe, May of 2013. Her phone died, and so I bought her an iPhone to use. Good for you. And at the time you bought her the iPhone, you were in this romantic relationship? It was on again, off again. Well, on again, off again. And one of the off again moments got angry that you bought her the iPhone. Well, she moved in. We'd been friends for Just tell me what you think she owes you for. Now you have a casual romantic relationship. There's no discussion of making it a permanent relationship, but you're living together. Correct. Go. Okay, what I do was, you think she owes you for? I was working up in San Jose back in April, and I had given her one of my debit cards to use for food and for smokes, and I told her no alcohol. She had an alcohol problem, and that's why I took her in, because I've been 26 years sober, and she was uh, Okay, good. Battling. So you gave a debit card to somebody who you think has an alcohol problem, at and the, you said you could use this for food and cigarettes, but you can't use it for alcohol. Right. Well, at the time... <laughs> At the time, she was not drinking. Well, if she wasn't drinking at the time, then why would you tell her that she couldn't use it for alcohol? It is a good question. That's why they keep me here. <laughs> what do you think she owes you money for? That's well, my question. You gave her a debit card and... 
And on May 1st, she used it to go out and drink and spent. There you go. So she doesn't know you. That you gave her the credit card. What else? Okay, on May 2nd, she was arrested. What were you arrested for? Uh, public intoxication. Is that matter still pending? No, Your Honor. It's over? Yes. And? And uh, she contacted me on May 3rd, wanted me to bail her out, and I told her no. I, you know, she was drinking. I didn't trust her. And over the course of the next five days, she was more and more sober, and she convinced me that she would get a job, she would be sober, she'd get into sober living, and she would pay me back. Pay you back for what? I bailed her out. The, the bail was $30,000. So when did you bail her out? On May 7th. So over the five-day period, she continued to call you? Correct. Go ahead. So I got back from uh, San Jose on May 9th. Now, did she come back to live with you? She was still living with me, yes. So she the... came back to live with you. Right. She lived with me from December until June. So after she had this drunk problem, you bailed her out, and she came back, and the two of you continued to live together. That is correct. Go ahead. Around the 1st of June, she got a job. She was starting to work. She was still drinking a little bit, but not as excessively as before. She was a, a blackout drinker and had a lot of problems in that area. And uh, we were supposed to be in a relationship. That's one of the reasons she came back and lived with me. And I said that would only work if you're sober, if you're going to get into some program. Well, I come to find out that she's been planning on getting back with her boyfriend that she broke up with. She's been planning on that for months. And so I said, oh, okay, you're going to do that. We're not in a relationship anymore, but now I'm in a, a little bit of a bind here because now I'm responsible for $30,000 worth of bail and to get you to court on time. And she decided that she was going to take off and spend four days in Long Beach. And I said, that didn't feel right to me. I'm not comfortable with that. And I saw all of her luggage being brought down and put into one area, and I had a feeling she was going to run. So I went to the bond company and had the bond surrendered on June 5th. And she was arrested? Well, I talked to the bounty hunter and uh, I was feeling remorseful about having her arrested and so I said give me a day and then on the June 6th I talked to a friend of mine in AA that had the same sobriety as myself and he says she's an alcoholic Jerry she's gonna run. So I called the bounty hunter up and and told him to go ahead and arrest her so he went to my house on June 7th and she had already packed her stuff and left. So they went to Long Beach, found her in Long Beach at her new place of residence and arrested her. How did they get her new address? I don't know, they wouldn't tell me. They I said, gave it to them, Your Honor. They said, we can't tell you how we got that information. So they found her and arrested her. So you said, I'm not being responsible for her anymore. Correct. So what do you want? I'd like to be reimbursed for, for the what? money that she promised me. What money? For, I paid $2,730 to get her bailed out of jail. $2,700 because you got yourself loaded. You wanted out of jail. And? I was arrested for public intoxication. They you wanted out of jail. On OR. I did not promise to pay him back. I was calling simply well, to let second. him know where I well, was. No, I don't believe that. Okay. I think that you were in there and you called him right away. And he said, I'm not bailing you out because you're drunk. And as the days went on, you got a little more desperate and you kept calling because he didn't bail you out for five days. When they arrested me again, the bounty hunters, I was released on OR. He should have received his money from the bail company. Did you get any money back from the bail company? No. Once somebody is bailed out, whether it's for a minute or for a There's month. There's a fee. It's a fee. Was that the fee that you paid? That was my fee, yes. Well, the bounty hunter's going to make a living. That's their piece. Right. That's their piece of the action. You owe them $2,700. When I moved, Your Honor, I made the bail bondsman aware of my work address. I did so, not have Jerry aware of my address. No, I'm just telling you. You owe him $2,700. I understand. It's your bail, not his. Anything else? Well, there were phone bills after... Uh... I don't care. Two people live together, sleep together, snuzzle up together. I'm not interested in phone bills, grocery bills, iPhone gifts. I'm not interested in that. When you live together and canoodle together. Drunk bail is something else. Tough problem. You working now? Yes, I am. Great. $2,700. Judgment for the plaintiff. That's all. I thought you me step out. I had never seen anybody quite as bad off as she was. He was harassing me, stalking me at work. I believed in her. I knew that she was a good person. I was feeling very uncomfortable. My main concern the whole time was to uh, get Elizabeth sober. He was manipulating me and taking advantage of me and my disease. I'm just grateful that she's sober right now. And now, the next case. All parties in the matter of Johnstone versus Baldwin. Step forward. Kevin Johnstone is suing his ex-girlfriend, Melissa Baldwin, for the cost of bunk beds purchased for his children. 
Melissa is countersuing for unpaid rent. Mr. Johnstone, you and the defendant were in a relationship. You lived together for a period of time. She has children. You have a couple of children. Three. You have three children. Yes. According to your complaint, while you were living together and in a relationship, you purchased bunk beds for when your children came to visit. You put them in a room in the defendant's home because you were living in the defendant's home. The relationship terminated and Ms. Baldwin did not let you take the bunk beds. You want your bunk beds back. I don't know exactly what Ms. Baldwin's defense is to that, except that she says she purchased the bunk beds with her money. And she has a counterclaim about some rent that she says that you owe her for when you live there. I don't entertain rent when it comes to sharing a room and sharing a life. I think it's ridiculous. Where did the money come from to purchase the bunk beds? My, uh, my settlement uh, from disability. From a disability settlement? Yes. How much were the bunk beds? Uh, 645.84. Where did the money come from to purchase the bunk beds? I transferred the money from my savings account on the day that we were at the furniture store into our joint checking account. None of that is true, Your Honor. Yes, I don't think so either. Show me. Show me. I, I'm just curious. I made the transfer on the same day we were at the store. He was in line. I was on my phone on my banking application transferring from my savings account into our joint checking account. Your Honor, I can explain the reason why her name is on that also and also mine. Because going through my divorce, I was concerned for my, the money that I did get through dis disability and what her, my, my wife's lawyer might have done. So Ms. Ms. Baldwin opened up an account through, she already had one open, but she opened up another one with me on it. So whenever I needed money, she was the one that was transferring money to my account. So is what you're telling me that in order to hide money, from your wife? Yes. You didn't have a bank account of your own? No, I did not. So you gave her the money, That's your correct. money? Yes. And your money was used to purchase whatever items you were purchasing because you chose... To trust her, yes. To what? To trust her. No, to defraud your wife. <laughs> That's what you would do? Is this the wife with whom you have three children? Two. Two children? Yes. How old are the two children? Seven and six. And how much did you get as a disability settlement? It was 28. 28 what? 28,000. The whole amount was 34, but six had to go to the lawyer. And what's the nature of your disability? Bad back. You have a bad back? Yes. We met playing softball together. What do you do now? Nothing right, right, right now, Your Honor. I w was trying to work, and she got me a job at her daughter's uh, school just being a monitor. When was the last time you worked, Mr. Um, Johnstone? It was early 2006. Is that how you met the defendant playing softball? No, it is not. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Tell me about it. I'm curious. It's going to be a very easy case for me to decide. Now, Ms. Baldwin. Tell me about how you met. Was it a league it's that a league. you played it's in? It's a co-ed, adult co-ed softball league. Adult co-ed softball? Yeah. And in what year did you meet? We had been in the same league probably for several years, but we played on the same team in the fall of 2010. What position did he play on the softball in he your He played team? third base. He was a phenomenal player. Third base. Mm -hmm. Do you still collect disability? Yes, I do, ma'am. In what amount? 1257 a month. What kind of work had you done before 2006? Uh, I worked at a mental hospital as a mental health worker. For how long? Almost two years. So if you haven't worked since 2006, the last two children that you had conceived while you were disabled? I was a stay-at-home father. While you were disabled? Yes. And you were a stay-at-home father and took care of them? Your wife worked? Yes. That's nice. So she worked. You did nothing except collect disability, and then you got a $34,000 settlement because somebody examined your case and clearly did not speak to the defendant here, Ms. Baldwin, who probably would have told them that you met playing softball. And you wanted to hide the money from your wife, your working wife. And it is from that money that these bunk beds... Yes, Your Honor. And you want me to help you? <laughs> the system's helping you enough, Mr. Johnstone. This system isn't going to help you anymore. Goodbye. Out. Out. 
Everybody's eyes are huge when they step out. Right now, I truly think that she's being vindictive. I supported him and our relationship for the course of our relationship, and I'm done with him. I believe that she's still in love with me. Three weeks ago, he sent me text messages saying that he loved me, he missed me, and he wanted to get back together. We could be a couple again. Her holding my property is her having the opportunity of, of me calling her. I didn't go to lunch with him when he asked me to, so I find that very comical. I was laughing on the side. She's been controlling since day one. Too much arguing. We argued it all the time. I had to call the police to get him to remove from my home because he wouldn't leave on his own accord when I asked him to leave. I was trying to, to get to, to where I was trying to go and she was following me. I'm glad to be done with it. I've given enough. Um, I've invested enough in this relationship. I'm, I want to be done with this drama. And alone. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2102, Peterson versus Stewart. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Peterson, you and Mr. Stewart met online? Yes. You met Mr. Stewart, and according to your complaint, a romance developed, and there are two things that you believe, now that the romance is over, that he owes you. One of them is a loan that you made to him for $1,000. Now, Mr. Stewart does not deny that you gave him $1,000, correct? No, ma'am. Your defense is that it was a gift. Correct. And not made as a loan. Okay. On what date did you and Miss Peterson start to date? Uh, we never dated. Uh, we actually wasn't through no dating site. Just uh, somehow, coincidence, we came through. Did you see her? I met her once in person. When? When she paid for a hotel for my birthday. Give me the date. Uh, January 30th. Of this year? Yes, ma'am. So you will, we're going. Okay. The thousand dollars at that time, I was I was been struggling with heart disease, which I, I just got out the hospital for having a, a heart surgery last Friday. So financially, my dealership was a little bit under the burden. So I asked her if she would help me. And when did you ask her? Was that in January? No, ma'am. That, that's a couple months later. All right. So that would be in March. Yeah. And it's the only time that you ever met her was in January. I met her once, other than that, when she gave me the money. Other than that, it was just normally her texting me, how you doing, do you want to meet up? Okay. So you met personally twice. Correct. And after January, you didn't see each other personally, just by messages, and that's when you asked her for money. And you were going to tell me why in March you went to this case. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So why did you ask her for $1,000? Because she offered to help me. No, no, no. Nobody offers to help you unless they know that you need help. Well, it's in writing. No. Nobody offers to help you unless uh, yes, you let them know that you need help. I was kind of life coaching her. We both was going back and forth. We had an open line of communication, so I kind of got comfortable to ask. So I see what you're got saying. Got comfortable to ask? She already gave me money before that thousand. That's why I was comfortable. Just a second. I'm talking about the loan. Mm-hmm. I want you to tell me, since you acknowledge oh. that she gave you the money, tell me why you needed it. Well, I needed it because I paid for the trip, which was twenty-one eighty, which she gave me two thousand plus one hundred and sixty more dollars for luggage. Came to just shy of twenty-four hundred dollars. I don't so she, understand what you're talking about. Well, she's already came to me and gave me money for us to take this little trip together. What does that have to do with this thousand dollars? That's not what I'm talking about. Are because you, she was. Did he start to talk about his? Business needing money. He has a used car business. Yes. Really, before you come on a program like this, you should really watch so that you would know that one of my favorite sayings is, if you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory, especially if you're smart. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not so smart, and within three minutes you tell two different stories, that, Mr. Stewart, is a phrase that you should learn to live by. If you tell the truth, you don't need a good memory. That's not correct, Your Honor. Well, that's only because you wouldn't know the truth because you have, to have been introduced to the truth. He says, the $1,000 at that time, I was struggling with heart disease, which I just got out of the hospital for having a heart surgery last Friday. So actually, my dealership is a little bit under the burden, so I asked her that's if she right. would help me. Okay, and let me tell you what you swore to in your answer. She offered to help me catch up on my child support. On a phone conversation, yes. I just asked you one simple question, sir. You acknowledged she gave you $1,000. What was it for? So now I have three reasons. One, your car dealership was a little bit of a burden. Two, she was returning your money to you. And three, you were catching up on your child support. Yes. Those are the three things that I have in front of me. 
Yes, ma'am. Is it door number one, door number two, or door number three? Whichever one you would like, ma'am. So, so far, it's $1,000 for the plaintiff. Now, whether it was for school or whether it was for your children's support, she's not responsible for your children's support. You're responsible for your children's support. Have you ever met his children? No. She doesn't even know your children. No. Do you have a child support order? No. She asked me to marry her, Just though. a sec. I asked you a question, yes, not her. Do you have children? The answer is yes. Yes, I have children. You lead, I lead, you lead. I always lead. Yes, ma'am. Later. You had some trouble with your finance. Joy Peterson claims her ex-boyfriend, James Stewart, owes for travel costs and a loan. Now, the children do not live with you. They're above age. Yes, ma'am. When you swore in your answer that you had gotten behind in your child support order, what child support order was that? It's the last child because I got behind because I was out of work. So they're above age, but I owe a little rears. Okay, so that's the child support that you were behind. Had you been noticed to come to court on those arrears? I've never been in a contempt, no, ma'am. I've always kept a good standings with them. Okay, but you're behind now. Yes, ma'am. You were behind then in March. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, did you request that your child support order that was on arrears only be stayed while you weren't working? I got a new caseworker who wasn't willing to work with me at that time. So. Okay, so that was difficult. Your caseworker yes. was involved in this child support yes. order. Uh, that sounds better. And the child support order was in favor of the state? I don't owe the state no money. I paid all fees off with them. I just owe the back child support. To the mother of the children? Yes. Okay, $1,000. Now, I'm going to come to you. According to you, you gave the defendant $2,000 to buy travel tickets for you. Yes, Your Honor. When? I gave him money in March. At the same time that you gave him the thousand dollars? No, ma'am. That that was in April. Show me proof of that. And I want to see two thousand dollars taken out from someplace for him to pay for these tickets. And they were tickets for you to go from where you live, which is where? Springfield, Ohio. To Miami. Yes, ma'am. The two thousand dollars was in March. What were you gonna do in March? In March I gave him the surgery. So he told me yes. Sure. So I gave him the two thousand dollars for that. That's not then he said, "Well, that's going to be more than that." I said, "Well, that's all I have for the tickets for me and my daughters." He said he wanted to go, so he was planning on going. Mr. Stewart. Yes, ma'am. On what date did she give you the two thousand dollars to buy the tickets? It was early March. She could. Yeah, March looks like March 25th. She gave you two thousand dollars. And yes. when were you supposed to go to Miami? We, we were supposed to go July 4th, and she. Okay, just a sec. You're supposed to go in July. So you're talking about four months later. Yeah, she canceled the trip. Okay. When did she cancel the trip? Uh, she canceled the trip. I don't know that at all. Yes, ma'am. Now, just a second. So you're going to have to show me. I didn't borrow it. You borrowed the $1,000. I didn't say you borrowed this $2,000. She gave you money for a specific purpose. Right, she went... Don't speak. She gave you money for a specific purpose to purchase airline tickets. For us. Which you... I don't give a rat's behind for who. She gave you money to purchase... As I did. Airline tickets. As I did. This is not a dance. No, I'm just This is not... You lead, I lead, you... I always lead. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. I always lead. Yes, ma'am. She gave you $2,000 to buy tickets that you acknowledge. The trip was canceled three months before the trip. Now, you say they were non-refundable tickets. Yes, ma'am. Show me. We, we... I just want to see where you tried to get either a refund or a credit three it's months. And I don't speak tickets. And I could neither get money back for them when she canceled it or a credit. And I said, in all that paperwork, show me. It's just public knowledge on their website. I apologize, I do not have it. It's not public knowledge on any website. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $3,000. $1,000 loan, $2,000 for the tickets. We're finished here. Thank you very much. Well, out! This court is out! She wanted to go on a vacation. Taking advantage of me. She was being a little aggressive. Don't even look that way. <laughs> now, hopefully, we can just move on with our lives. I think we should print that on cards to hand out to people as they leave here. If you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> that defendant, in the first 15 seconds, told 
three different stories about the same thousand dollars reminded me of personal items and money from a GoFundMe fundraiser. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2119, Crane versus Crane. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, Miss Crane, this is a very sad case. This is your daughter. Yes, it is. And I don't know how many children that you have, but I know that you had a son who was in medical school who was, how old, 25 years old? 30. 30. Sounds as if he was a popular young man. He was in an outing with friends, and sadly, he drowned. Yes, he did. Saving and that two happened, women. Just a second. And oh, that sorry. happened when? That happened July 29th of this year. This is what the case is about. His friends, in his memory, started a GoFundMe page. Correct. And there is approximately $40,000 in that GoFundMe page. There was, yes. I said approximately. Yes. There was. And your daughter is, for want of a better word, in charge of that Facebook page, GoFundMe Proceeds. Correct. And it is your claim that as the next of kin, because he died without a will, you are entitled to some or all of that Facebook page. It doesn't even matter about the GoFundMe funds. I mean, that would be nice in a perfect world, but my daughter took everything from the day and emptied it. So I didn't get my chance to be Josh's mom for the last time. I didn't get to empty his apartment. I can't cure that, madam. No. I no. can't cure that. No. And you can't put any sort of a value on anything that your daughter might have taken from that apartment because you don't know what was there. Correct. So I can't help you with that. In a perfect world, maybe she would have gone with you to the apartment, but she didn't. Correct. Based upon what I read, you were not there during the search for your son or the discovery of his body. Is no. that correct? I was at home. Okay. And your daughter was there? Yes, she was. And I assume that you were close to your brother? Absolutely close to my brother. Just curious, what prevented you? You were notified that your son was missing. What prevented you from going there? My daughter was at the house the day Josh went missing, and we had my car torn apart. Um, she left after they called her, and I, I definitely would have hitched a ride, but I didn't have a vehicle. Your Honor, I got... She, just a sec. Did you say she was at your house? Yes, she was. Well, then why didn't you go with her? They didn't go home. Yeah, we were working on my car. She left okay. to go home, and she got a call from search and rescue. I hadn't been answering my just phone. Oh, well, that's a different story. You hadn't been answering your phone. It wasn't as if nobody called you. No, no, she didn't, she didn't call. She it wasn't as if nobody called you. Did somebody call you? Right, from I'm search I'm and rescue, yes. yes. Somebody called you. Yes. Okay. Mrs. Crane, this is your problem. If your son passed away without a will, and I'm sure that somebody else, maybe a professional has told you that, a legal professional has told you that, if your son passed away without a will, depending upon the laws in your jurisdiction, you, as his parent, might be construed as next of kin, and any property that he owned at the time of his death would transfer to you. Right, correct, yes. He didn't own the GoFundMe page at the time he died. No, he did not. So you don't get it. Okay. Any part of it. Okay. Your Honor, the she people, already received funds from the GoFundMe as well. Just The people that set up the GoFundMe page, I assume, were classmates of your brother's? Yes, they were his other fourth-year medical students that had reached out to me and asked if they could... Don't tell me what they asked you. They set up a GoFundMe page. Do you have the paperwork for the GoFundMe page? I'd yeah. like to see it. Okay, so they raised $39,287. Correct. Okay, is there anything that is in writing that makes you either the beneficiary of? The organizer of Would the... Would you do me a favor, look it up underneath the photo? It, it does say that I am the beneficiary listed it... on there. Thank you. You're Jessica. I am. Okay. He's organizing this fundraiser on behalf of Jessica Crane. Mm -hmm. That's her. That has changed. Initially, it was for Joshua Crane and uh, with the legal remedy. Just show me. It's never been for... Show me. Just a second. Just a second. Mrs. Crane. Yes. It wouldn't make any difference, but I'm willing to look at something that originally it was on behalf of... Right. The, Somebody else. The reason I'm here today is not because of the GoFundMe. The, Your Honor, that's exactly why she's just, here. It's the money. Just, it's, shh. it's always been about the money.
All right, how are you going to pay the note on a $14,000 truck? I plan on returning to work. This incident has thankfully keeping her son's property and money from his GoFundMe fundraiser. This is your complaint. I'm yes. suing the defendant, Jessica Crane, in the amount of $10,000 for my portion of my deceased son's GoFundMe account his and personal items, including my son's guitars and his vehicle. Correct. Okay. Now you're not looking for his GoFundMe account. I never really was because I well, never knew the law on GoFundMe. I tried to find out and speak to someone about it and get legal advice, and I could never find anyone. Well, it's very easy. He didn't own this property while he was alive, so you have no title to it. it if they said that they're starting a GoFundMe page in the name of your son to be for the benefit of animal rescue, you wouldn't have any control no, over that. No, it was meant for his funeral costs, which, just a I, second. which I also paid for, It says, for, just a honor. second, on behalf of Jessica Crane. Right. On behalf of Jessica Crane, just for my own curiosity, I'd like to know. Your son was buried at some point? He was cremated. He was cremated. And I have the receipts. I paid for his obituary, his cremation. Okay, so what I'm asking you is, there were no serious funeral costs. Mm, I that, got everything donated on my just funeral. A, just, just, That's not true as Just well. a second. I'm asking you, Mrs. Crane, did you pay anything for your son's funeral? No. Okay. I find troublesome that his friends, because that sometimes happens, it's human nature, you feel so badly about something, you want to do something, and probably the easiest thing to do is to raise money. And the easiest thing for probably these people who are in their 20s and 30s is to start a GoFundMe page. I mean, it just would seem to me if they wanted to do a scholarship for him at the school, if they wanted to do something else. This is for those people out there who are watching, who are GoFundMe people. I've seen some of the more ridiculous ones, you know, and there are good-natured people out there who see these things and will donate $5 and $10. Oh, my goodness, they need funeral costs. Well, in this case, there were no issues, and almost all this money, $40,000, is left. What are you going to do with it? So there's a couple things that I planned on doing with it. It's why the money has been sitting in account. I just want the people who donated this money to know what you're going to do with it. It's so, not for you to buy anything for yourself. Your Honor, I mean, that would be ridiculous. That's not what was in their minds. So I want to know who I'm dealing with. Your Honor, after all of Josh's others as well, and he, they have talked about setting up a scholarship fund for my brother, and I was going to donate a portion of that money back if UC Davis decides to set that up on his behalf. And then I also wanted to set up scholarship funds for my sons, who my brother was very close with. So what you're telling me is you're going to give a little to UC Davis for a scholarship in his name, and you're going to use some for your two sons for their education. Absolutely. Well, that's really not what it was intended to do. I'm just telling you. It was not what it was intended to I do. I mean, at the end of the day, that's how GoFundMe's are set up. People can set them up for an intended and then, purpose and, and they're then, used for anything. And then, well, I'm, but I'm just telling the people out there, before you spend money on a GoFundMe page, make sure it's going to go to a place where you want it to go and for the intended purpose you want it, which is to somehow celebrate the life of this young man that was cut short so tragically, and it would seem to me, Miss Crane, you don't have to do anything because they made you the beneficiary of this money. But it would seem to me that a stand-up person would take whatever is left of that and create a scholarship in his name at UC Davis, which is where he went to school. I can't order you to do that, but I'm just telling you, and everybody else out there, make sure if you have a good heart and a good spirit, you know where your money is going. Okay, so you're not entitled to any of the money. Now, did you take your brother's guitars? I cleared out my brother's entire Sh uh, Just a yes, second. Yes, Your Honor. Just answer. Would you like one of your son's guitars? Very, yes, very Would you like so. one of your son's guitars? Do you have any of your son's guitars? Uh, none. Your no. Honor, my mom has a long history of substance abuse. She's bought gifts for me in the past, and she's pawned them off. And I would like to keep them in my family so that's where they stay. So that's why I have possession of them, because I don't want them going to a pawn shop. I was told I could visit one of my son's guitars at her home. Who, do you, who, just a second, do you play guitar? No. I just want it because it's my son's, and well, I bought three of his guitars for him. None so of I, these okay. guitars were purchased by her. They're very expensive guitars. My okay. brother purchased. I can't every order one her to guitars. do anything. I'm just asking her whether she would give you one of the guitars, and she said no. The next thing we have here is a vehicle. 
Now tell me about the vehicle. So Josh didn't have a lot. He was a fourth year medical student. He has a truck, a Toyota, a 2019 Toyota Tacoma that he still owes about $14,000 on. I have that here, $13,841.76 on. Uh-huh. And one of the keys, they found his keys on his body and they gave me his keys. So we brought the truck up to where we live in Northern California, took the truck up there and it's been kept in storage until this is all sorted out. I personally wanted to keep the truck. I have the means to finance the truck in my name. I have the means to make a payment. She does not have the means to make a payment. She doesn't have a job. She doesn't have a driver's license. She can't provide insurance for it. I mean, she has driving. That's not particularly relevant. There's $14,000 left on it. Mm -hmm. Are you employed? Um, I was until just, just to say, The answer is either yes or no. Are you employed? No. All right, how are you going to pay the note on a $14,000 truck? I plan on returning to work. This this incident has taken my job, believe it or not. Actually, I don't believe it. Your Honor, I work just three jobs. Sh- just a second. Actually, I don't believe it. Okay. So the answer is, if you can't afford to I make can. the payments on this truck, and the only thing that's going to happen is it's going to be repossessed by the bank. Have you been making payments on the truck? I have not made a payment. Who is the finance company? Credit Union. Where is the truck currently stored? Give me the address. I don't have an exact address. And Lynn claims her daughter, Jessica Crane, is wrongfully keeping her son's property and money from his GoFundMe fundraiser. I want to see the paperwork on the loan. Okay. Sarah, when we finish with this case, call Credit Union, advise them who has the truck, let them go repossess the truck. We're finished here. Your case is dismissed. This court is adjourned. I had an addiction problem, and she's just angry. She's angry at me, and I've tried to make amends. I've tried to get this better, and she's, she won't have it. My daughter got away with taking absolutely everything, and she wasn't entitled to it. I think that if there's any lesson to be taken away, aside from the fact that you're not supposed to fight, you know, when you lose somebody so young and so vital, the one innocent party is the credit union who loaned him the money to buy the truck. She's been hiding the truck now for five months, hasn't made a payment on it. The right thing to do is for her to turn that truck into the credit union because I can't control that, except that I can advise the credit union where she is, who she is, that she has possession of the truck and they should go and repossess it. Anyway, it's all very sad. For impound fees, harassment, and defamation. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2142, Brown, Palin versus Manning. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Palin, this is your former husband. That is correct, Your Honor. How long were you married? 18 years. And this is your daughter. Correct. Is this your only child? With Mr. Manis, it is. Yes. Yes. You have other children? One other, yes. How old? 32. When did you and Mr. Manis separate? I moved out of the family home in March of 2018. And this is your boyfriend? Correct. I'm going to, in broad strokes, at least try to reconcile both the complaint and the answer in this case. I assume there was a time when your daughter, whose first name is? Trisha. Trisha was living with you after the separation. We had a mutual divorce decree of 50-50. And was that honored? Until September 4th of 2020, Mr. Manis had brought Trisha back to my home. And while we were out of the home, he had her pack her belongings. No, no, okay. Let's stop there. Trisha, how old are you? I'm 19, Your Honor. Okay. And right subsequent to the separation and the divorce until... September of 2020, you shared custody. Correct. Yes, ma'am. And then Trisha decided she would prefer to live with her father. Correct. For whatever reason. I don't have to go into it because this doesn't really have to do with who she chose to live with or where she was living. It has to do with a car. Okay. So while she was living with Mr. Manus, Mr. Manus purchased a car. Yes, ma'am. For her use. Correct. In what month did you purchase a car for her use, month and year? Oh, boy, I believe that was probably February of 2019, I believe, 18 or 19. Well, let's figure it out. It was about six months prior to the the case with with her. Okay, so September 4th, we had the car 
It would have been probably June or July of the same year. So you bought her a car a couple of months before she decided to come and live with you. Well, right before she decided to come to live with you and not have 50-50 custody anymore, you purchased a car for her. Correct. And she drove that car in June or July, August? Correct. At your house? At both houses. She was allowed to go to take the yes, car to their house? Correct. When she saw her mother? Yes. And then bring it back? Correct. There was a time when you took the car away from her. When was that? Probably mid, mid-August. Mid-August of 2020? Correct. Well, the threat was to take the car away because her grades were slipping. I didn't actually take the car away. When did you take it away? I actually never did take it away. Her mother and her mother's boyfriend decided to purchase her another car to eliminate my threat of taking away the car. Well, I don't know if that's because, but they decided to... Correct. ...purchase another car. And what did you do with the car that you had gotten for your daughter? I sold that. When did you sell it? Probably a month or so after she got the other car. And the threat was made to your daughter because you were concerned about how she was doing in school or how she was doing socially. What were the reasons? Well, her grades this... were slipping. Okay. So I wanted her to concentrate more on her grades rather than... Grades were slipping? Correct, at school. Did she give you any reason for that? She was under a lot of pressure with the divorce. So you purchased a car, Mr. Brown and yes. Ms. Palin, with the understanding, according to your complaint, that the car would remain in your name, there would be payments made on the car, and once the car was paid, it would transfer to Tricia. Well, one thing led to another. Things sort of went south. And according to what I've read in these papers, you got sort of annoyed, and the car that you had purchased was in the physical custody of Trisha, who was living with her father, and Mr. Manis caused the car to be towed and impounded, which caused you substantial... And you want him to pay those expenses because you did, in fact, get the car out of impound, subsequently sold it. How much were the impound fees? One thousand five sixty-five and twenty-two cents, Your Honor. Okay. And Mr. Manis, in defense of that, acknowledges that he towed the car, your car. He towed the car, which was at your house? Your Honor, I had where, the... Just, where was the car? The car at the time was at my house. That's what I'm asking you. The car was at your house. You had it towed to impound. And you had it towed on what date, sir? The car was impounded on September 4th. Of what year? 2020, I believe. And your defense for doing that... Your Honor, he just, requested... Just a second. Your defense for doing that is that you were merely following Mr. Brown's instructions. And the police officers. You were following Mr. Brown's instructions. Correct. Unless you have a police officer here. I have several police reports, Your Honor. About what? This isn't just about the car. There's several years of harassment. No, no. I'm dealing with the car. I understand. Right now, I'm dealing with the car. So I have the several officers that came, instructed us to get the car removed from the property. Well, that may be, sir. You can have the car removed from the property and ask the police to have it deposited in front of their house. I understand. Yeah, you chose not to do that. May I show you his request to have the car towed? He offered a reward for the car to be towed. Just a second. I want you to tell me where I'm wrong so far. See, what we can all do to make her as unhappy as possible. So I really don't understand two people who probably, in their own way, love their child, but hate each other more than they love their child, which, it, to me, is absolutely bizarre. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Sometimes we try to fit it all in. Sometimes we don't know what's in store. Sometimes one and one makes three. So much to love along this ride. That's why Nationwide is on your side. Captain. Captain. You can't have her! And I'm taking her home! It's every guy's worst nightmare getting accused like that. Can you guess what every woman's worst nightmare is? Well, at least I won't die alone.
Curtis Brown and Heather Palin. Claim Heather's ex-husband, Scott Mattis, owes fur impound fees. Scott is countersuing Heather for filing a false CPS report. Okay. You had the car towed to an impound. You did not call him or your ex-wife the day that you had the car towed to impound. It was some period of time later, if the fees for impound were $1,500, your excuse for that is you were merely following his request. His request. That's what you wrote in your answer. Is that wrong? No, Your Honor. Okay. Well, so now we know that you didn't notify them when you had the car towed. Your Honor. Because you could have... Because you could have had the car towed to the local police precinct and called them and said, come pick up the car. It can't be in front of my house anymore. Your Honor, he was wait. actually at my house that just, night. Just a sec. I didn't ask you anything. Sorry. Go ahead. The police, when they came to our house, the car was present. They acknowledged the presence of the car. You can't tell me what the police did, sir. I have the reports, Your Honor. I'd like to see... The, I will see the report. What I'm asking you is... There were, and stop the friction. Send it back to the people who purchased it, you could have done that. You chose not to do that. Your Honor, the reason I chose not to do that is because of the... I have several false allegations from CPS, the police. I did not choose to have any contact... You don't have to have any contact with them, sir. In order to... You don't have to have any contact with them. Just like you paid a tow truck company to take the car to impound, you pay the tow truck company, you live in a private house or an apartment. Private house. You have the tow truck company drop the car off in front of their house. Now, after you had the car towed to an impound company, did you contact them in any way? No, I didn't. No. I was instructed. Did you ask to the police, police to contact them and tell them? The police knew, yes. I didn't ask you what the police knew. You can't tell me what the police knew. So you had the car towed on September the 4th. And when were you notified the car was in impound? I received certified letter on September 26th, which was a Friday. It said to contact them Monday through Friday between 8 and 4. Just a second. You received that on September 26th? Yes. Is that the first notice that you would had that's that the per- car was impounded? Correct. That, yeah, that's... The okay. Notice. So now the onus is upon you, Mr. Manis. I want you to prove your defense to me. And your defense was you were following Mr. Brown's instructions. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. That's all I want to see. Here you go, Your Honor. So this says, $100 reward to anyone that impounds my car. Call a tow truck and tell them to contact me. Yes, sir. You know this number. Yes. Yes. Well, did you do that? The tow company sent them a letter on 9-10 of 2020, and I have the proof of that also, Your Honor. Yeah, I would like to see what you're looking at. That's not on September 4th. No. That's not on September 4th. 9-10, they sent that out, the notice. Let's see. Well, this says that attempts were made on 921, 926, and 105. That's what it looks like, attempts that, made. That's when they had attempted to deliver, but they did not pick it up. This box, they would have had notice. If I had taller parents, I would have been 5'7". They had no notice. Okay. $1,565. That's what you owe them. It was a malicious act. Your Honor, this isn't just about the car. This There's, is this is all listen to me. False this is all through CPS. This, if l- you would please let me. me. You have a counterclaim. Yes, ma'am. And your counterclaim I'm going to hear. You. Right now, you owe Mr. Brown $1,565 because what you did was malicious. And I don't understand something. You have one child together. I assume that you don't want to make her miserable. That when she was born, you said, oh, let's see what we can do over her lifetime to make her as unhappy as possible. Let's see what we can all do to make her as unhappy as possible. So I really don't understand two people who probably, in their own way, love their child, but hate each other more than they love their child. Which, to me, is absolutely bizarre. So, right now, because you did a malicious thing by having their car towed and not giving them a heads up that you had the car towed to a place that was going to cost them money, you owe them $1,565. Now I'm going to hear your claim that they made false charges to CPS about you. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, oh, can I say something? About what? Um, the car. Before you say anything, did I say anything that was inaccurate? 
Did your father have the car towed? The answer is he's acknowledged that. He had the car towed and put it in a place where neither your mother or her boyfriend knew where it was, resulting in their having to pay fines to get the car out. Is there anything that I said was wrong? That is partially incorrect because I had contacted my mother in the time and asked either... Okay, that's that I'll hear. Okay. You contacted your mother. I did contact either the title or my money back and that they could have the car before that. Um, once the Facebook post was... All I want you to show me is that you notified either your mother or Mr. Brown that the car was impounded when you notified them. She also did ask my best friend I, where it was. All I want, just as, that's all I want. Don't tell me what you said to your best friend who's not here. All I want to do is see where you notified your mother that the car was impounded. So there is this one about money in my account, which was about the car. I don't want to see anything about the car. I only want to see it where is... you notified your mother or Mr. Brown that the car was impounded. Okay. But I don't have the text about okay. that, but I did notify her that it was impounded. Well, I don't know that, and it seems to me you weren't talking to your mother on a regular basis because there was a lot of acrimony. If you have it, you have it. If you don't have it, you don't have it. So, Trisha, you could sit down. I'm telling you that it is inappropriate, the act of sharing a bed with a teenage female child as a father would give me cause to pause. The Pepidou Pepper on Panera's new Green Goddess Caprese Melt. It's a small detail, but when enough of those details are melted together, they become big. New Toasted Baguettes. Cater your next event with Panera. Defendant Scott Mattis has accused his ex-wife, Heather Palin, of filing a false report with Child Protective Services. Now, it was a malicious act to have the car impounded. There's no question in my mind that if they knew it was impounded, they would have gotten it out before. $1,565. Now, you want to show me what information you have yes, with regard to filing a false CPS report? Correct. I have okay. the CPS reports and the police investigators report. Okay, may I see it, please? Twenty. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's been several years of these reports, and just, just disgusting allegations. Shh. Okay. So you filed or you made allegations to Child Protective Services. CPS actually contacted me, Your Honor regarding um, several calls that they had received for the welfare of my daughter, Trisha. In what year? Um, I was contacted, I believe it was 2019, and again in 2020. They contacted you? Correct. For what? To do an interview because of the claim that was made about regarding Trisha's safety. That were made by an anonymous source? I don't know who made them, Your Honor. In Minnesota, you can't make multiple reports okay. by one person. I cannot call day after day to make reports. I'm just Let's asking you, did you at some point claim that you had reason to believe that your daughter was being in some way physically abused by her father? I'm... That's either a yes or a no. Yes, to a point. Yeah, okay. And part of that involved a sexual abuse. That one was not claimed by me. Well. I, I did state to CPS that he does have her sleep in her his bed with him? Well, I have to tell you which something. Which is a little I weird. I have to tell you something. That, that doesn't seem a little weird. It seems a lot weird that your daughter, your daughter acknowledged, sir. Your Honor. Your daughter. Um, what I'm telling you is it is inappropriate for a man to sleep in the same bed as his 15-year-old daughter. Your Honor, that's we went my to a view. concert. And if that's true, there may be a reasonable explanation for it. She said she was scared, whatever, but when interviewed, that's what it says in here. But I'm telling you, as a mother and a grandmother, in my view, and I'm not a professional psychiatrist or psychologist, but it's appropriate, but I... Your Honor, we went to a concert. What? And shared a hotel room. No, that's not what your daughter said. She no, no, no. That's not what your daughter said, sir. May I finish? Yes. When she was going through all the stuff with the divorce and everything, she came into my room. I was asleep. She laid next to me. I'm asleep. Uh, listen to me. You're... 
I'm not suggesting that anything inappropriate, sir, Absolutely. understand this. I'm not suggesting that any inappropriate actions happen between you and your daughter. I'm telling you that it is inappropriate, the act of sharing a bed with a teenage female child as a father would give me cause to pause. I would say, you know what? That's not a good idea. It's a special, sweetheart, it's especially not a good idea when parents seem to be feuding. It's grist for the mill. You may want to go and, if she's scared, say, sweetheart, I'll go and sit in a chair in your room. Many times. In your room. Many times. But please, this is inappropriate. Do you understand? It's inappropriate. Did you read the detective's statements in there? No, I'm not interested in the detective statements. Obviously. If what your daughter says is true as a result of the investigation, then there was reason for somebody to suggest to CPS to do an investigation. So, listen, bottom line, I can't tell the two of you to stop feuding. I can't. You either hate each other more than you love your daughter. That's the answer. And this court can't fix that. All I can do is fix $1,565, which is what you owe them for impound fees. This case is over. Thank you. Yeah. This court is adjourned. I think the judge is wrong. I am thankful for the judge. She didn't read all the evidence. Multiple pages weren't read. He's very good at manipulating others. And multiple accusations. And being the person that, oh, pity me, feel sorry for me. False allegations to the CPS. My ex-husband decided that he would show me no, it's the house and moved her out on September 4th. And that's when it all just, it just started going downhill. She has a lot of hatred. I believe he's very angry that I divorced him. That she falls off a bridge. And he lost the control over me that he had while we were married. You know, Sarah, I've been doing these family cases for a very, very, probably 40 plus years. And it always makes me sad that adults, the adults, the mother, mm -hmm. the father, even the new boyfriend. There is a window in life when you feel relatively healthy, nothing hurts you, you don't have a bad back, you don't have to worry about indigestion, <laughs> you can walk around without a walker, you look pretty reasonable, and that you will take years away from that good time to create negativity around not only yourself, but the people that you love. I think that's great advice. I I always said to people, both men and women, that, you know, it's one journey. You can take that journey and put as much positive energy into it. Yeah, I just felt bad for the daughter. I mean, I know she's grown now, 19, but still, 19, it still hurts your feelings to hear and see that your parents hate each other more than they care and love about you. Well, maybe that statement will make a difference, you never Will know. make a difference, because I'm sure it's not true. Yeah. I have a feeling. But when it's said to you in, in a court in front of your child, hopefully they take some action on it then. Well, hopefully they'll say, boing, <laughs> you know. I mean, she has a new boyfriend, and he's got his daughter who's living with him. They should be happy. Yeah. And they're divorced. Close the book and move Close on. Close the book. Yeah. Her mother and her boyfriend should get a puppy together. <laughs> Well, they should, not, not until, until they, they get they married. Got married. <laughs> not until they... <laughs> but do something. This is a grown young woman. Have a healthy she adult may... relationship with, with your, your adult child. child. Right. Yeah. Not over... Okay, we should not see that the problem is in the video that I should put this in. So, I don't have a video. So, I don't have a video. So, I don't have a video. I don't have a video. Next, next, next. Video Okay, stop, stop, stop. Do the photo that next video. Go this bar. অবশ্যই ঘুমিয়ে যাও আপনাদেরকে আমি নেক্সট ভিডিও দেখার জন্য অনুরোধ রইলাম মানে অনুরোধ করলাম ঠিক আছে হ্যালো দোস্ত फिर एक बार मैं हो गया हाजिर और आप देख रहे हैं हमारे चैनल और एक कैटलॉग ठीक है
इस कैटलॉग में बहुत ही शानदार अलग अलग डिजाइन बने हुए हैं तो देखते रहिए बहुत ही शानदार डिजाइन के साथ कैटलॉग देखिए आपको ये सभी डिजाइन कैसी लग रही है वो जरूर कमेंट कर सकते हो और वीडियो को जरूर पूरा देखिए इसमें क्या लिखा है वो आपको जो पढ़ने में आए तो भी बोल सकते हो नहीं पढ़ना आए तो कोई बात नहीं टाइम पास करो और बने रहेगा हमारे साथ देखिए बहुत ही शानदार रिंग इयर रिंग के साथ ये सभी लेडीज रिंग है बहुत ही खूबसूरत देखिए मेरे पास ऐसे 50 के आसपास कैटलॉग है तो आपको ऐसी डिजाइन देखने के लिए हमारे पास तो मेरे डेली में पाँच पाँच छः छः वीडियो डालता हूँ इसमें सब में डिजाइन दिखाता हूँ तो हमारे पास लॉट ऑफ डिजाइन है देखिए दोस्तों बहुत ही शानदार डिजाइन तो क्लियरिटी अच्छी आ रही है मोबाइल की पता नहीं क्या हुआ है सेटिंग में आपको हमारा चेहरा कैसा पसंद आता है नहीं आता लाइक करो शेयर करो सब्सक्राइब करो और अपने फ्रेंड्स फैमिली को शेयर हमारी हरती आए क्लियरिटी हमारे हरती आवे नहीं आती ठीक है तो वीडियो को जूम करके देखो बराबर कितनी मिनट हुई दो मिनट तीन मिनट चार मिनट पाँच मिनट तक हम आपका टाइम वेस्ट करेंगे कितनी अच्छी शानदार डिजाइन तो सब में देखते रहे बने रहिए हमारे साथ अभी बजे सुबह दोपहर के बारह नहीं दो बजे तो आप कितने बजे देख रहे हो हमारा वीडियो वो भी जरूर कमेंट कर सकते हो ऐसी आइटम देखने के लिए आपको जरूर फॉलो करें लाइक करें शेयर करें पहले मैं एक बार देखता हूँ आप हमारे साथ बने रहे बाद में आपको दिखाऊंगा अगले वीडियो में तो एक रुकिए और दो मिनट तक हमारा वीडियो पूरा देखिए इसमें क्या क्या दिया हुआ आइटम है आज तक मैंने नहीं देखा ये है दौड़ना बहुत ही खूबसूरत देखो टॉप हम दोस्तों हमारा मेकअप पहले से तैयार कर रखे रखते हैं तो एक बार सब वीडियो डाउनलोड करके रखते हैं साइड में और फिर हमारा काम चालू करते हैं कोई भी चैनल डिलीट हो जाए तो तुरंत नए चैनल में वीडियो डालते हैं थैंक यू फॉर वाचिंग दिस वीडियो